live from a Saturday night at Utah Grizzly Hockey. As this evening is the rubber match of the three-game series between the Utah Grizzlies and the Kansas City Mavericks. Hi, everybody. I'm Tyson Whiting. Welcome to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. We're going to have a lot of fun here on a Saturday night. As I mentioned, it's a rubber match, and this could end up being a deciding game to figure out if the Grizzlies have a successful road trip or not, as Utah is 2-2. Two and two. So far in the eight-game road trip, it's the longest road trip of the season. Utah split two games against the Idaho Stillheads last weekend. To start the trip as Lucas Preak stopped 38 of 39. Utah won 2-1. to one. And then last Saturday, Idaho got a 4-0 victory as Jake Kupski got a 23-save shutout. In game one of the series against Kansas City, Dylan Fitz and Terran Pfizer found the back of the net. Utah led 2-1 to one after two periods, but Kansas City scored two unanswered in the third, and they got a 3-2 to two victory. And then last night, Utah scored three goals in the first nine minutes of the second period as Tyler Penner, Ben Tardiff, and Andrew Nelson all found the back of the net. Utah led 3-1 to one after two periods, but then Kansas City scored a four-on-four -four goal as Jake McLaughlin fired a shot that was redirected by Pascal LaBerge, and then McLaughlin scored himself on the power play with a little bit more than three minutes left in regulation to tie things up at three. They went to overtime, and Cameron Wright, 204 into the extra session, fired away from the left wing and got a pass. Dylan Kelly, the Kansas City goaltender, and Wright picked up his second game-winning goal of the season. In fact, both of Wright's uh, professional goals, all two of them, have been game winners on the road on Friday nights as he opened up the road trip with what turned out to be the game winner on an empty net goal with 39 seconds left, and then Ido scored with 13 seconds left, and that made Wright's empty netter the game winner, and then obviously in overtime. The first overtime game played by the Grizzlies this season, Cameron Wright scored 204 in. There was one scoring change from last night, Ben Tardiff, was robbed of a second period assist. Well, they just added Tardiff to get an assist on the Tyler Penner goal. That was Utah's first goal last night. So give Ben Tardiff one goal and one assist last night. Andrew Nelson also had one goal and one assist for Utah. And Cameron Wright ended the night with one goal and two assists. So it should be a lot of fun tonight. Grizzlies and the Mavericks. The series is on the line. It's the fifth of eight straight on the road as Utah will be in Allen, Texas for a three-game set beginning on Wednesday night. And if you think about a barometer, if you win two out of three against Kansas City, then you go to Allen and you win two out of three there, all of a sudden you go back to Mavericks Center and you have a five and three road trip and you'll take that any day of the week, especially with as tough as it is to win on the road in this league. When we come back, we'll go over some stats as well as the lineup for both teams as we're in business on a Saturday night. And you're listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network presented by Utah Operation Lifesaver. to the Grizzlies pregame report. I'm Tyson Whiting face off in a few minutes over at Cable Dahmer Arena. We're hanging out at Maverick Center. It's actually a fight night. The Fierce Fighting Championship is are at Maverick Center tonight. And hey, if you're in the, in the West Valley area, come on down. Say hi to us as we're just outside the Grizzlies team store as you walk up to enjoy the entertainment here at Maverick Center this evening. A bunch of games in the league and the world of sports. We'll get to the starting lineups in five minutes once we see them on the ECHL app. One game has gone final in the league. Adirondack defeated the Trois Rivières Lions by a 6-1 to one score as Adirondack gets their first win of the season as Adirondack came into play winless and get them on the board as they're now 1-4-1, and one, break up the thunder as they are on a roll, winning one in a row. 
60 minutes left in the third. New Finland leads Maine 4-2. to two. Second intermission, South Carolina leads Atlanta by a 3-1 to one score. First intermission, no score between Jacksonville and the defending champion Florida Everblades. Also after one period, Kalamazoo and Indy are scoreless. First intermission, Redding leads Wheeling 2-0. Also after one period, no score between Greenville and Savannah. Early second period, Worcester leads Norfolk 1-0. Uh, late first period, Cincinnati and Toledo are tied at 1. Games involving teams in the Mountain Division. Utah and Kansas City obviously will have that game here shortly. Face off in about 10 minutes over at Cable Dahmer Arena. Starting up about the same time, Wichita and Tulsa will meet at BOK Center. Wichita is off to a 3-1-1 one one start, while Tulsa is 1-2. and two. And starting out about 7-10, face off at Idaho Central Arena. Rapid City, who is 2-4 and four on the season, they take on the 5-1. Idaho still heads her off to a fast start. In fact, the only loss by Idaho this season was by the hands of the Grizzlies eight days ago, and that was game one of eight straight on the road. That's when um, Utah won two to one. Taryn Pfizer and Cameron Wright found the back of the net. Lucas Preak stopped 38 of 39. So who's going to be a net for the Utah tonight? Is it going to be Lucas Preak, who didn't even dress last night, or is it going to be Garrett Metcalf? And if it is Metcalf, I think that Kansas City fans would like to see Preak because – with the way Metcalf has played, if you think about it, the last three starts that Garrett Metcalf has had, two last season and last night, all three of them have been against Kansas City. On March 11th of 2022, uh, Metcalf stopped 39 of 40. As Utah came away with a 3-1 to one victory, Metcalf's last game last season before suffering a season-ending injury was against Kansas City, where he stopped 40 of 43. Ben Tardif had a hat trick that night, and Utah came away with a 6-3 win. And then last night, Garrett stopped 32 of 34 as the Grizzlies had a 3-1 lead. Kansas City scored twice. Uh, once they scored on a 4-on-4 situation as Pascal LeBurge uh, redirected a Jake McLaughlin shot. And then with about 3-10 left in regulation, McLaughlin uh, scored a power play goal from the slot. And, you know, then Cameron Wright ended up winning it in overtime Watch out for the second periods for Utah. The second period's been outstanding as the Grizzlies in the second periods this season. Uh, in this series, really, it's 4 nothing. But this season, Utah has outscored the opposition 8-3 to in the second periods. Now, Utah does have to clean things up in the third as the Grizz have been outscored 10-3 to in the third periods this season. So it should be interesting to see what happens here tonight. It's the rubber match as Kansas City won on Tuesday night. 3-2, to two. and then last night in overtime, it was a 4-3 Utah victory, but Kansas City did pick up a standing point last night. Their record is 3-1-1 one, and one on the season. And if you talk about a couple guys that really stood out for the Mavericks, I look at Jake McLaughlin, who had two points in the third period. He's got four points in five games this season. Watch out for him. He's probably Kansas City's best defenseman. He'll wear number 27 for the Mavericks this, this evening. Jeremy McKenna has been pretty impressive for them early in the campaign. He's got three goals and four assists in five games. Uh, Jake Jeremko has got four points in five games. I think Keegan Haldeshell is placed on reserve, so I don't think he's, he'll be in the lineup for Kansas City. But watch out for Tristan Mullen, who spent all of last year in the AHL with the Cleveland Monsters. Mullen has three goals and three assists in four games, and he was outstanding on Tuesday night with one goal and one assist in Kansas City's victory. Mavericks, as I mentioned, are 3-1-1 one, one on the season, led by third-year head coach Tad O'Had. As for the Grizzlies, uh, they are 3-3 three and three on the year. They are 2-2 two and two on the road and 1-1 one and one at Mavericks Center. And this is game five of eight straight on the road. And it'll be interesting to see how the Grizzlies match up against Kansas City in the first period. And who gets off to that fast start? Utah scored first on Tuesday night. Dylan fits 6 one into the contest. Last night, it was a scoreless game until... Nick Passajov scored with 47 seconds left in the first period. Kansas City led one to nothing after one, and then the Grizzlies led three to one after two periods. Kansas City scored two in the third. In fact, the Mavericks have outscored the Grizzlies four to nothing in the third periods this series. And in overtime last night, Cameron Wright obviously played the hero role for the Grizzlies. So it's Utah and Kansas City meeting for the third of eight times this season. In fact, this will be the last game that the Grizzlies will play in Kansas City this year 
The Mavericks will be at Mavericks Center, no relation, December 17th and 18th for a two-game set. And then Kansas City will be in March 10th, 11th, and 12th. Three games in three days with that final game being on a Sunday afternoon. So Utah's, you know, the last chance they got in Kansas City, the five games against the Mavericks at Mavericks Center later on this season. Next week, the Grizzlies will face the Allen Americans next Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, then the Grizzlies will be home for six straight beginning on Thursday, November 17th against Idaho. Make a note of Friday, November 18th, as that's going to be the first day of the second AFCU Friday of the year where tickets start just $8 when you pay using your AFCU debit or credit card at the Maverick Center box office. And it's the annual Pooch on the Pond. Get your tickets to utahgrizzlies.com or call 801 801- 988-8000. That's 801-988-8000. But call during, you know, normal business hours. I think if you call that number right now, nobody it's possible nobody answers the phone. Or maybe Guy, who's sitting next to me, maybe he'll answer the phone if you call that number. We'll talk with Guy during the intermissions and postgame report as he'll be hanging out here in the studios right next to the Grizzlies team store in the front of the Mavericks Center. As Utah's taking on Kansas City and what should be a fun night of hockey as it looks like a good crowd has filed in. To Cable Dahmer Arena. Let's see if we picked up the starting lineups on. Um, yeah, it looks like the starting lineups have been posted for both teams on the ECHL app. Starting in net for the Grizzlies will be Garrett Metcalf. He is 3 0 in, in his last three starts against Kansas City, 3 1 against Kansas City overall. Uh, Garrett stopped 32 of 34 last night in Utah's. 4-3 to three victory. Actually, he stopped 32 of 35, but hey, they tell you not to do math on the air, but nevertheless, um, you know, Metcalf was outstanding last night. He'll be in net for the second straight game. Lucas Preak will be the backup to Metcalf as last night. There was an emergency backup. As the Kansas City Mavericks look like they have hit the ice on Saturday night, wearing the same jerseys they wore in each of the first two games of this series. Starring defensive pairing for the Grizzlies is Connor McDonald and Victor Bartley, the other defensemen we're expected to see tonight include Bryson Martin, Nate Clarman. Clarman had an assist last night. Kyle Pouncey and Andrew Nilsson. Nilsson was the number two star last night as he had one goal and one assist. Nilsson's been outstanding passing the puck as he's got four assists in his last five games. So it's going to be McDonald and Bartley starting out defensively along with Martin, Clarman, Pouncey, and Nilsson. So Joey Kolatarchi is going to be a scratch tonight as is James Shearer, who's battling an injury, and Jordan Stone. Starting forwards for the Grizzlies, Taryn Fizer, who's got five goals on the season. He's got five of Utah's 14 goals. Uh, he also picked up an assist last night, so he's got a point in five of his six games this year. He'll be lined up next to Dakota Raby, first full season as a pro for Raby out of the University of Michigan. Last year he was at Sacred Heart as a graduate transfer. And Brandon Cutler, who was scoreless through four games, but I imagine he'll be due tonight. Cutler had 27 points in 23 games for the Grizzlies last season. So the starting forwards are Pfizer, Raby, and Cutler. Other forwards we're expected to see tonight. Looks like they're about the same eight forwards, um, you know, outside of the three starters that played last night. Ben Tardif had one goal and one assist last night. Uh, Zach Seko says two goals this season. Tyler Penner got on the board this season as he redirected a Cameron Wright shot two minutes into the uh, second period. Keaton Jamison, Johnny Walker, Dylan Fitz are going to be out there as well. Cam Strong. So it looks like a pretty strong forward unit for the Grizzlies this evening. Starting a net for Kansas City will be Dylan Kelly. It'll be the second straight start for Kelly. He stopped 26 of 30 last night in the Kansas City 4-3 loss. Starting defensive pairing is Tommy Muck and Jake McLaughlin. The forwards are Nick Pastajoff, Jeremy McKenna, and Pascal LeBurge. It's the Grizzlies and the Mavericks. Faceoff is coming up. We'll be back in 30 seconds on the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Rio Tinto. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick... 
you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. It's a great night for hockey as two big standings points are on the line tonight. In fact, the series is on the line as Kansas City got a victory on Tuesday night, 3-2 to two the final score, and then Utah last night got a 4-3 overtime victory. As Kansas City wearing the same jerseys they wore each of the first two games of the series, and Utah looks like once again they're wearing the black jerseys with white numbers, white on the, on the elbows, and professional green trim. Garrett Metcalf will get the start for the second straight night for the Grizz. Lucas Preak will back him up. Metcalf in his last three appearances against Kansas City as a 3-0 record with a 940 save percentage and a goals against an average of about 2.67. And he'll be in net, the former draft pick, uh, sixth round of the Anaheim Ducks back in 2015. Uh, Metcalf is a Salt Lake City native, born in Salt Lake, raised in Salt Lake, and he's about as local as it gets. And he'll be in net for the Grizzlies this evening wearing number 39. Starting defensive pairing is Connor McDonald and Victor Bartley. Starting forwards are Taryn Pfizer, Dakota Raby, and Brandon Cutler. Looks like all the preliminaries are out of the way over at Cable Dahmer Arena. Looks like it's the best crowd of the three games so far in this series. Kansas City had a crowd of about 1,600 on Tuesday night and about 2,600 last night. Looks like they've got probably close to about 4,000 this evening for the rubber match as uh, whoever wins this game will win the series. We'll see if anybody gets a multiple-point game. Andrew Nilsson currently leads the Grizzlies with two multiple-point games. He was outstanding last night. Taryn Pfizer, Cameron Wright, and Ben Tardiff each have one multiple-point game this season. Last year, Ben Tardiff had 19 multiple-point games, and that led the Grizzlies club. And so it's going to be interesting to see what Ben Tardiff brings to the table. He is my pick to click. Now, here's the story about the picks to click is that I'm trying to find a prize for the pick to click uh, winner. But go to the Grizzlies YouTube page, uh, listen to the game, and we got a live chat. Put your pick to click on that live chat as to who you think is going to be the number one star for the Grizzlies tonight. As looks like the faceoff at center ice, Alex Normandin's the referee. Cutler will take the draw against Nick Pastajov. Pastajov was just named Kansas City's captain two days ago. As the draw is won by Kansas City and we're underway as the Mavericks skate from left to right. As we see it on Flow Sports, your mind's eye see it on YouTube. Left wing, Pfizer with a shot. That one goes wide off the glass and rolls along the far boards. As Kansas City delivers a hit and they get it out to center ice. Mavericks carry it through the line. Three on four, left wing shot. Saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes towards the far boards. Connor McDonald will skate around his net. Now feed it to Victor Bartley. Now head to Raby. And looks like the whistle blows. The puck exited the zone. Then Kansas City tried to bring it back in. They are called for offside. 30 seconds into the game. So Tardiff is my pick to click. Guy over there on the other side, who's your pick to click? Just yell it out. He's going with Cam Strong as his pick to click. Strong wearing number 26 this evening as Zach Sekos will take the draw against Hugo Waugh. Sekos scored a goal in each of his first two games this season. He's on a four-game drought. I imagine Sekos could find the back of the net tonight as Utah wins the faceoff. Clerman over to Nilsson. Andrew skates down the middle. Now feed a blue line to blue line pass. It glances off the stick of Utah. Sekos in the area. Now Nilsson winds and fires. Saved by Kelly. That was a blast by Nilsson. Now Sekos gets it in the left point. He'll try to feed it to the corner for Cameron Wright. Last night's hero. It rolls around the net and along the boards. Nate Konepke, he turns it over. Right wing shot. That one goes wide as Utah tried to go stick side on Kelly. Now Kansas City carries it across the offensive line, two on two. Mavericks, right wing shot. I keep think Garrett got a piece of that. Boy, I almost need that Fox glowing puck to try to track things. It's over in the left corner. Kansas City will feed it to the left circle. Now righty shot. That one goes wide. I think that was taken by Jeremy McKenna. Loren Yolette gets knocked down by Cameron Wright. Puck rolls around the boards. Now behind the net, Nilsson has it as he stations behind Metcalf. Grizzly skate from right to left as we see it on Flow Sports. A minute and a half into the game. Still no score. Both teams have taken one shot. Nilsson will fire it off the near wing boards. Gets to neutralize. Kansas City drives it back in. Nilsson regathers it for Utah. He'll feed it out to center ice. That pass did it hit the stick of Dylan Fitz. 
And it looks like it rolls around the boards. Jamison collides with Dalton Golly, number 52. Penner in the area as it drifts to Bryson Martin in the left corner. Back to Penner behind the net as he gets pinned by Theo Calvis. Jamison gets hit by Golly and gets divorced from the puck as Kansas City takes it. Mavericks feed it out to neutralize. Theo Calvis near the Kansas City bench. He blows a tire, bounces off the boards as the Mavericks will skate in towards the right side. And Utah with a good poke check as it goes out towards the left point. Grizzlies poke it back to center. Kansas City regathers as Utah makes a line change. Mavericks cross center ice, and they'll tap it into the right corner. Utah chases after it. Raby gets it ahead. Now Tardiff along the boards. He's locating it with Tristan Mullen. It goes out to neutral ice again. Kansas City dumps it back in as it rolls around the boards in a smooth ride as Penner loses it. Left circle, shot saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to, Neil, to Martin. Martin wearing number 14. will feed it out to the Kansas City blue line. Hits off the stick of Cam Strong. Guys pick the click, and the Grizz over to the right corner, tried to center it and fanned on it. Now Kansas City comes back. They cross center ice. Now they step over the blue line as the Mavericks skate towards the left circle. Shot goes wide, and the puck ends up rolling towards the right point. Kept it in as Sambrook. He throws to the left point. Mavericks will bounce it off the end wall as they're at the end of their shift. Utah gets it back three minutes in. Victor Bartley. Uh, he'll drop it off for McDonald. The captain throws the left wing pass to Bartley. Bartley gets knocked down by Sambrook. Cutler with great speed skates over there. Drifts it over to Pfizer. Now back to Cutler. Those guys were teammates with Victoria in the WHL. And Cutler feeds it over to the right point. Now Pfizer gets it taken away. Kansas City tried to nudge it ahead. It hit off of Pfizer. Rolls back towards the Kansas City end wall. As the Mavericks, Pascal LeBurge will feed it to the right side. Now Kansas City steps over the offense line. Passage off feeds it to the left circle. Mavericks try to get it to pass job out in front, and it goes wide of the mark. Raby will feed it ahead to Cutler. He'll get it across. Grizzlies enter the zone. Now back to Cutler. He'll skate down the middle. Eye gets back checked and couldn't get a shot off. Over in the corner, Tardiff gets to Pfizer. He skates towards the left point. Pfizer. Feeds it to the slot. Kansas City picks it off. Mavericks skate from left to right. It's Dalton Galley. He'll throw it to LeBerg. Left wing. Shot saved by Metcalf. Puck ends up back with Sekos. He skates around his net. Now he'll skate down the middle. Sekos at neutral ice. Veers off to the left as he crosses center ice and dumps it into the corner. Sekos races after it. Golly, who's got a big size advantage, boxes him out in the corner. Now Calvis will nudge it ahead to Golly. Utah tried to pick it off there. It goes out to center ice. Mavericks feed it to the left side. It bounces off the far boards. Pouncey skates over there. He was a scratch last night. Cole Tarchi is a scratch this evening as the Grizz will feed it over to the far side. They cross center ice. Three on two. Utah dumps into the corner. It's more of a three on three. As puck ends up deep in the Kansas City zone, Mavericks, their goal line will start the attack as they'll bounce it off the near boards. Goes out to center ice. Mavericks feed a end-to-end -end pass that bounces off the far boards. Utah gathers it. About five minutes into the game, still no score. Kansas City two shots. Utah's taken one. Grizz dumping in from neutral ice as it's taken back by Cole Kosky, number 49. He played for Worcester last year and averaged about a point a game. Kansas City spreads the ice. They'll get it out to the slot. Mavericks feed it to center ice. It bounced off a stick, or did it? The linesman says no, and icing is called on the Mavericks as trying to accept the pass was Garrett Klee. Klee wearing number 20. He was on reserve earlier, but he is in the lineup tonight. One notable absence from the Kansas City lineup is Keegan Howdeshell who scored the game winner on Tuesday night with 158 left in regulation. How to shell is out of the lineup for Kansas City this evening, and Garrett Klee replaces him. Draw's going to come out to center ice, so apparently the linesman said, hey, my bad, it wasn't icing after all. So the draw's at center ice, and it's won by Utah. It goes between the defenseman onto Metcalf. Garrett will shovel it across to Bartley, now to McDonald. He'll get it ahead as Utah spreads the ice. Grizz get it to neutral ice. They cross center. Utah dumps it in and races after it with good speed as Keaton Jamison. He hits Sambrook, but, Jam but Sambrook gets the puck and he'll nudge it ahead to Koski. Koski back to the corner. He'll get it to Sambrook around the net. So he'll bounce it off the far boards. Out to center ice. Kansas City, two on two. Mavericks skate towards the left circle. Take a shot. On that one goes wide. That was taken by Josh Lamon. Boy, he tried to get it over Garrett Metcalf's shoulder and ends up deflecting out of play. And that was an interesting battle as Lamon played at Mercyhurst University where for a couple of years he was a teammate of Garrett Metcalf's. So both guys play at Mercyhurst. In fact, Spencer Hess, who works in the Grizzlies' office, she's a Mercyhurst product as well. 
So that was a mercy Hurst play all around as Metcalf, I think it ended up bouncing off him and go and went out of play. 14-13 left in the first. Mercy Hurst had a few mentions here tonight. As the Mavericks win the offensive zone draw, Yolette gets tripped up. No call on the play. As the Grizzlies over in their own corner on the far side. As Pfizer gets double teamed and it rolls back towards the near side. Nielsen feeds it off the screen as it goes towards center ice. Dalton Galley gets it ahead as the Mavericks will re-enter the zone from the right side. But Utah pokes it back to center. Grizz cross center ice. They skate down the middle. Pfizer with a shot. That one gets blocked as the Mavericks try to clear it out. It stays in. Right point. Utah feeds the slot. Kansas City picks it off. Mavericks will bounce it off the boards. Good defense early. Nilsson left wing feeds it across. Tardif gets it down the middle for Cutler. Uh, Cutler got a check from the side and couldn't accept the pass from Pfizer as the Mavericks. 13-22 and counting left in the first. Still no score. Both teams defensively have been on point as Calvis We'll feed it over to the far side. Mavericks with a rink-wide pass to center ice. McKenna gets it. He looks to center. Bouncing puck, LeBerg. He feeds it to the left circle, and it's wide to McKenna on the give-and-go as Sekos will take it back. Zach will throw it to the left wing. Grizzlies cross center ice. Right side, they'll dump it in. Tardif chases after it. He'll feed it to the near wing boards. McKenna will get it to center ice for Kansas City. McDonald picks it off, and he'll dump it back in. Kansas City at their goal line. Tommy Muck being shadowed by Cameron Wright. Feeds it to the left side. Mavericks will throw it to the right. Entering the zone is LeBurge. He'll skate towards the circle. Take a shot. Saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes towards the left circle. Kansas City in the corner. Penner uh, gets spun around by LeBurge. McKenna in the area. And somehow it clears out of the zone. Mavericks will chase after it. Seven and a half minutes in. Still no score. Grizzlies make a line change. Jamison's looked good early on for Utah. Out to center ice. Mavericks dump it in. Metcalf will watch it go as Bryson Martin retreats after it. Martin, a former third-round pick of the Buffalo Sabres, as Fitz will get it across to Jamison. Keaton crosses center ice, gains the line from the left side as he'll skate around a Maverick to the corner. He hits Sambrook up top. Taking it is Theo Calvis. As he'll skate around his net as Jamison. Or Calvis will dump it in. Look, oh, it looked like Jamison did get called for that. Now, I was wondering. We didn't see the referee. High sticking is the cause. Jamison hit a Kansas City skater over in the corner, and the official looked like he spotted it. Good call by Alex Normandon. And so Keaton Jamison's going to go to the penalty box. 11.56 left in the first period. We're back in 30 seconds. No score. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey, presented by Mountain Land Supply Company. Jamison, two minutes for high sticking. He's in the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Have you or someone you know been charged with a DUI? Rogers and Russell is Utah's DUI defense firm. Consequences for driving under the influence in Utah are serious, and you need great attorneys on your first line. Look for a letter in the mail from Rogers and Russell inviting you to schedule a free consultation. Don't throw that away or discard this letter. Call and get Utah's best DUI defense team. Rodgers and Russell. Kansas City's on the power play for the first time tonight. They were one for four last night on the power play. Mavericks this season, 28.6% on the power play. Grizzlies penalty kill, 77.3%. Mavericks win the draw as they'll feed it over to the left side. Mavericks get it across. Now Tommy Muck, Utah pokes it away. Foot race, and Kansas City will win it. Now skating over there. Looked like with Sekos, but Kansas City did have a step on him. Mavericks re-enter the zone with momentum. Skating in Zelberg. He'll center it. Righty shot. Saved by Metcalf. And Garrett made the stop on his keister. I don't know how he did it. But Garrett kept it scoreless on the best save he's made maybe all weekend. As Garrett closed the door, Kansas City pretty much had a, uh, an odd man rush after the puck exited the zone. They re-entered with a ton of momentum. Centered it. I couldn't see who got the shot off, but Garrett made the stop. And all I saw was he was on his backside with the puck. Great stop by Garrett. 11.39 left in the first. Pass the job. will take the drop for Kansas City. Secos for Utah. 17 seconds into the power play. Still early on. No score as Kansas City wins the drop. The McLaughlin will take a shot. That gets blocked in front. Mavericks will feed it to the left point. 
And Utah pokes it away. Cameron Wright skates down the middle. He tries to split a double team. Gets around. Puck ends up rolling towards Kelly. Now it's the left side. Wright gets taken down. Kansas City takes it away and skates around their net. McKenna crosses the center ice with speed. He'll throw a left wing pass as the Mavericks skate towards the corner. Uh, they try to feed it out in front. Poked away by Clorman. Back to the far corner as the Mavericks deep in the offensive zone. Utah battling to the goal line. Kansas City skates towards their right, looking for a shot. They couldn't get it off as Utah took away time and space. Now Dylan Fitz gets the puck, and he'll clear it out. Boy, Fitz is about as good a penalty-killing defend- uh, forward as I've seen in quite some time, probably the best since Travis Barron, who's currently with the AHL's Tucson Roadrunners. Kansas City crosses center ice. Tardif takes it away. He'll feed it to McDonald in the Grizzly zone. Now Victor Bartley will sell it down as Kansas City picks it off at their blue line. Puck at neutral ice. Kansas City gets it. They'll enter from the right side. Now they'll feed it towards the middle. Hugo Waugh will skate towards his left, try to feed it up top to Muck, but it goes past him out to center ice. 30 seconds left in the power play as Muck will re-enter from the left side as the Mavericks kick it across, and it ends up bouncing off something and goes back to the Mavericks zone. Ben Tardif chasing after it. He knocks down a Kansas City skater. Oh, they're going to call that a penalty. Kansas City throws it to neutral ice intentionally, and Tardif's going to get two minutes. Boy, he was just battling with Kansas City, and looks like he spun him around just a little bit. Boy, that was calling it pretty closely from my perspective. But holding's going to be the call. That's going to give Kansas City a five-on-three for 17 seconds, and then after that, Kansas City will continue on with a five-on-four power play for a minute 43 after that. Looks like they're calling it somewhat tight tonight on the holds, as Tardiff gets two minutes for holding. He's in the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions, so you can rest and relax. Tyler Penner will take the draw against Pastajoff from the left wing. Still no score. 10-12 left in the first. Mavericks win the draw as they'll feed it to McKenna. Now back to the high slot. McLaughlin, who had two power play or had a power play point last night. He gets the puck right side. He'll feed it across as the Mavericks will skate towards the left goal line. Oh, they try to feed it in front, and that one goes wide. Out of the penalty box is Jamison. He'll join the play. Mavericks in the left circle. A fire righty shot, and looks like that one goes wide. And out of play as McKenna was trying to go top shelf on Garrett. But, you know, Metcalf goes about 6'5 or 6'6. And so there's not a whole lot of room. And it looks like the Mavericks want to go high on Garrett. And uh, there's not a whole lot of room there to try to shoot it in. Tardis in the box right now. Two minutes for holding. Five on four power play for Kansas City. Their second power play of the first period. As the Mavericks win the face off left point, they spin it around the boards. Utah tries to cut him off as the puck ends up towards the left side. And where is the puck? Well, Utah cleared it out. 9.30 left in the first period. Still no score. McLaughlin gets it as he'll skate down the middle kind of casually about half speed. It gets to about center ice. Now look back into his own zone. He'll feed it to the left side in a hard pass. Now the Maverick center as they work the puck around as it bounces off the near glass. LaBurge will spin it around the boards. Nobody was at the left point. Kansas City skates over there to keep it in. And Martin's over there in the area. Utah knocks down Kansas City. And the Grizz are able to clear it out. 50 seconds left in the power play. Less than eight, uh, less than nine minutes left in the first period. As McLaughlin will restart the attack as he'll drop it off as he'll get off the ice for a change. Tommy Muck replaces McLaughlin. He'll bounce it into the far corner of the Grizzlies zone. Connor McDonald over there. But the whistle blows. I think Muck dumped it in from his own, his own territory and gets called for icing. As he tried to get to center ice and dump it in, but he never did quite get to center ice. Muck will have to stay on the ice as it looks like it is an icing call. Well, I don't know. As the puck <laughs> faceoff's going to be in the Grizzly zone. So, oh, it's going to be another penalty on Utah. Dakota Raby goes to the box. What did he do? <laughs> so, it must have been off the screen. High stickings to call on Dakota Raby. So, now we got a five on three for 35 seconds. And then Tardif will come out of the box and we'll have a five on four. That's the third penalty by the Grizzlies here in the last four minutes. I can't tell if it was a good call or not because it might have been off the screen that I'm watching. Nevertheless, uh, Kansas City with a five on three for 35 seconds. Draw is going to be in the Grizzly zone. Kansas City wins it. They'll feed it to Sambrook. He'll get it to the left side for Tommy Muck as Kansas City's got two defensemen on this shift. Back to Sambrook. Left side shot. 
Glove saved by Metcalf. And Garrett holds on as Sambrook has two assists in five games this year. 6'3", 205 pounds. Kansas City was all alone in the left side, but Garrett was able to make a nice glove save. 8.36 left in the first period. Still no score. It's the second five-on-three that Kansas City has had in the first period. 25 seconds left in the five-on-three. Tardif and Raby are both in the box for Utah. Tardif will come out of the box first, and then Raby about a minute and a half after that. Kansas City wins the draw. Sandbrook on the right side will feed it to the goal line. Now back to Sandbrook. He'll skate towards his left. 15 seconds left in the five-on-three as the Mavericks towards the left side. will skate back towards the point as Kolkowski feeds it to Sandbrook. Back towards the slot. Shot saved by Metcalf. No rebounds allowed by Garrett as he holds on. Boy, Garrett's looked sharp here tonight. He has seen eight shots, and he stopped them all here early on. Mavericks will make a line change, and so will Utah as Bartley, McDonald, and Jamison will be the three on the ice for Utah. Six seconds left in the five-on-three. Ben Tardif will come out of the box, and then about a minute later, Dakota Raby will come out of the box, maybe a minute and a half later, as Jamison crouches down to take the face off against Nick Pastajov, who was elected Kansas City's captain this season. It's Pastajov's third year in Kansas City. He played his college hockey at the University of Michigan, where he was a college teammate of Dakota Rabies. Utah comes away with the puck. Great job by Jamison, and he'll clear it out. Well, it was kind of anybody's puck there, and Jamison just took it away and cleared it out of the zone. Tardif's out of the box, and I think he'll join the play. 113 left in a five on four Kansas City power plays. They'll bounce it off the near boards. McLaughlin gets around a check. Seckles will feed it to McDonald, and he'll try to clear it out. It stays in left side. Now the Mavericks beat it across to the right. Now back to the left point. The Mavericks are passing the puck pretty well in this first period. Pascal LeBurge, number 29, will feed it up top to McLaughlin. He'll take a shot on its blocked. Goes back to McLaughlin. He winds and fires. That one goes wide. Now to the right side. Kansas City in the circle. Gets it back to McLaughlin. He'll fake a shot, and he'll feed it to McKenna. McKenna, right side shot. Saved by Metcalf, and Garrett holds on without a rebound. Boy, Garrett's rebound control has been outstanding here early on. 41 seconds left in the Kansas City power play as we got a whistle as Metcalf gives the puck to the linesman as Garrett has stopped all nine he has seen, and the Salt Lake City native looks like he's got his A game early on. And we mentioned before faceoff, he's been outstanding in the last three games against Kansas City. He's got a 940 save percentage against the Mavericks. His last three appearances against Kansas City coming into play tonight, all of them Grizzlies wins. Utah wins the draw and clears it out. Good job by Utah winning a couple faceoffs here shorthanded. As the Mavericks will have to restart the attack, skating from left to right. No score, 7-13 left in the first. As Kansas City's been on the power play, it seems like the entire four-minute stretch here. Uh, the entire last four minutes or so as the Mavericks towards the left side, trying to feed it to McKenna, glanced off a stick. They're battling towards the left goal line. Now they get it to pass the job. He gets it poked away, and it goes out to center ice. McLaughlin will skate back to his own zone. He's being shadowed by Cam Strong. Now ahead, Kansas City to neutralize. LaBurge with Strong nearby. As out of the penalty box is Raby. We're back to five-on-five five skating. Great penalty kill work by the Grizzlies. Kansas City enters from the right side. McKenna will feed it across over to the left point. Mavericks race over there. And looks like the whistle blows. Nielsen's battling with Kansas City over in the right circle. McKenna's in that area. Boy, the Grizzlies just got out of the penalty box. You don't want to end up back in there. Is McKenna going to go to the box for Kansas City? Boy, the linesmen are escorting him over there, and it looks like Kansas City's going to get a penalty. So we couldn't see what McKenna did, but it looks like the Grizzlies are going to be on the power play for the first time tonight. 6.32 is left in the first period. Looked like McKenna was headed towards the penalty box, and we'll tell you about it when we come back. No score, great penalty kill work by the Grizzlies. 6.32 left in the first period. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey, presented by Rio Tinto. Maverick's new Fiend to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand, so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. Jeremy, don't call me James McKenna, gets two minutes for slashing. 
13-28 into the first period. He's in the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell as McKenna gets two minutes, and it'll be Utah's first power play of the game. Uh, Grizzlies penalty kill. It's a perfect three for three so far. Jamison got a high-sticking minor, 8.04 in, and then Tardif got a holding minor, 9.48 in. Dakota Raby, a high-sticking minor, 11.13 in. So McKenna is in the box for Kansas City, and they show him right there on Flow Sports as he looks a little dejected, but nevertheless, looks like a good crowd on a Saturday night. It is Hockey Fights Cancer night over in Kansas City, and that one has some special meaning to me right now as the Grizzlies win the draw over to the right side. Lefty shot saved by Kelly. We're still scoreless. It's Utah's on their first power play of the game. Puck goes back out to center ice as Cameron Wright will retreat into his own zone. Grizzlies skate from right to left as we see it on Flow Sports. In your mind's eyes see it on YouTube. That's right. I know what YouTube's known for, but we'll try to paint a picture for you. Tarda feeds over to the right side. Grizzlies enter. Right point. They'll bounce it into the left corner. Utah chases after it. Throws it up top for Nilsson. Andrew gets it to Cutler. He'll skate towards the left corner. He'll bounce it off the near wall for Nilsson. Back to Cutler. Now he'll bounce it off the boards for Nilsson again. Andrew's open. He'll skate towards the circle, but he'll back it out towards the blue line. He'll feed it to the left side for Cutler. Back up top for Nilsson. Andrew gets it to the right side. Tardif. He'll fire lefty shot, and he scores! Ben Tardif gets his second of the year as he fired a quick-looking wrist shot from the right circle. It got past Dylan Kelly. Johnny Walker is out in front of the net, but it's Ben Tardif that gets a, a, his second goal of the season. He had 20 goals last year as he's now got a goal in back-to-back -back games, and the Grizzlies get on the board first. Nilsson fed to the right side for Tardif. He was all alone, fired away. Walker looked like he was trying to get a stick in the way, but after talking it over, Tardif and Walker, it was Ben that skated to the bench first. It looks like Tardif gets his second goal of the year. And he looks like he's fired up, sporting a sweet-looking mustache. That's Utah's third power play goal of the season. They were two for 31 coming into play tonight. In fact, the inflation weight was bigger than the Grizzlies' power play percentage coming into play tonight. But they're one for one this evening. As Kansas City wins the faceoff, and they'll dump it in. Metcalf behind his net. Five and a half minutes left in the first period as the Mavericks will roll it back around the boards. Taken by Victor Bartley, and he'll lift it into the air as it goes into the Grizzlies zone. Kansas City and Utah collide. Grizzlies have a player lose a stick, and that was Jamison as the Mavericks will skate down the middle, throw a blue line to blue line pass. It glances off a Kansas City stick on to Utah as Bartley will get it across to the captain, Connor McDonald, now to center ice. Grizzlies cross center, try to dump it in. Kansas City cuts it off in Mavericks territory. As Kansas City turns it over, Fitz looks to center it, and Penner. Uh, Penner tried to center it once again, and it bounced off the pads of Kelly. As out at center ice, Kansas City dumps it in. Less than five minutes are left in the first period. Grizz are up 1-0 on Ben Tardif's power play goal. Utah feeds the left wing pass. Dakota Raby crosses center ice. He'll drop it off for Cutler. Brandon skates towards the left corner, over skates it. Now it goes back to the Mavericks around the net. As McLaughlin will feed it off the near boards. Grizzlies keep it in the offensive zone. Pfizer fakes a shot, gets it to Nelson. He fakes a shot as well. He'll spin it back around the boards to the near side. As Clarman over towards Raby. Raby nudges it across. Kansas City takes it away as they'll skate towards their own far corner. And the Mavericks get it to center ice, but Utah gets it back. Raby re enters the zone. He gets hit by McKenna. McKenna took that penalty that led to the Grizzlies' goal. Dropping the gloves is McKenna. McKenna's going to get in a fight with Brandon Cutler. As Cutler and McKenna. McKenna drags down Cutler. You can tell neither guy's used to fighting much. Now on the ground, McKenna has a few angry words for Cutler. As McKenna probably thought he delivered a clean hit. And Cutler said, nope, that's not a clean hit. Let's fight. Less than five minutes left in the first period. As McKenna will skate towards a penalty box. And Brandon Cutler will do the same. So Cutler and McKenna drop the gloves at neutral ice. It is a fight night at Maverick Center. As they've got a lot of fights over on the floor, Brandon Cutler's going to skate towards the locker room, and so will McKenna. There's less than five minutes left in the period as Cutler's going to walk to the locker room as they drop the gloves. Five minutes for fighting each. Utah leads 1-0. 4-0-3's left in the first period. There's a timeout on the ice. We'll take one as well. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey, presented by Mountainland Supply Company. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. 
Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Well, Brandon Cutler's now a goal away from a Gordie Howe hat trick. Ben Tart have got Utah on the board, 14-15 in. It was a power play goal. Nielsen and Cutler with the assist. Then Cutler got in a fight with Jeremy McKenna, 15-57 into the first period. As we got 4.03 left. Grizzlies hockey this season is brought to you by Rio Tinto. At Rio Tinto, as pioneers in mining and metals, they produce materials essential for human progress. Great to have Rio Tinto on board this season. Grizzlies hockey also brought to you by Operation Lifesaver Utah, Sea Tracks, Think Train, and by Maverick. Adventure's first stop. Draw's going to be at neutral ice. That's when the fight took place in that area. Kansas City wins it. We'll skate five on five as the Mavericks will dump it in from the right side. Oh, they tried to dump it in and fanned on it, and now they're called offside with 354 left in the first. During the first intermission, we'll talk with Guy Karenz and talk about this first period, which has certainly seen a lot of action. I think it's seen a lot of good defensive work on both teams. As Kansas City wanted to improve that unit in the offseason, I think the acquisition of Jake McLaughlin has done a lot to improve their roster. And for the Grizzlies, I think Andrew Nelson's played pretty well as Tardif battling with Jeremko. Jeremko pushes Tardif at the faceoff line over in the left wing. The linesman has a word for them as Dremko off the draw pushes Tardif. Utah wins the faceoff. As the Grizz skate from right to left, they cross center ice and dump it in, chasing after it as Sekos as he collides in the corner with Tommy Muck. Now behind the net, Nate Klarman trying to break free with his stick as he's battling with McLaughlin. McLaughlin takes it away. Boy, he's been an awfully impressive defenseman. McLaughlin was with the champions last year, the Florida Everblades. As Kansas City skates over the offensive line, loses the puck. Now they get it back at neutral ice and dumps it in. As it goes towards the end wall, Nielsen will nudge it ahead as the Grizzlies carry it out to center ice. Tardif crosses center, gains the line to the right side, stops along the far boards, drops it off for Martin. He'll take a shot on it, glanced off a stick and goes wide, I think. Martin gets it, left point. He'll feed it across. Grizzlies get it over to Tardif. Ben gets to the right circle, a righty shot saved by Kelly. Rebound goes to the right corner. I think that was Cam Strong. Actually, it was Dylan Fitz. He gets tripped up. Did the referee spot it? No, he didn't. Right in the right corner. We'll pin it back towards the near wall. Sekos gets knocked down and make that Martin. Tardif in the area. Sekos nearby, but it's Kansas City that gets the puck. Cole Koski will carry it out to neutralize. He gets knocked down. No call there as the Grizzlies back at their own zone. will feed it to center ice. It bounced off a right stick and on to Dylan Kelly, who will cover up as Utah chasing after him. And the Grizzlies will have an offensive zone draw. Good job by Tyler Penner skating down there to make sure Dylan Kelly couldn't get a pass off uh, as he was able to cover the puck. And the Grizzlies with an offensive zone faceoff. It's a 1-0 Utah lead. The Grizz, I think, have scored first in four of their seven games this season. It almost seems like they've been pretty even in a lot of statistical categories. Nothing really stands out so far this season except for the Grizzlies dominating second periods. As Kansas City wins the draw, they feed it out to center ice. Utah picks it off, and they'll dump it in. Kelly behind his net, and he'll feed it to the near side. Kelly's a big goaltender at 6'5", 217. Penner over in the right corner, and as Jamison's over there as well, Jamison gets pinned by Lamon. Lamon, who played for Allen previously, as it rolls towards the end wall. Sandbrook cuts in front of Jamison. Now the Mavericks get it, and they'll carry it out to center ice. They'll throw a right wing pass to Koski, who couldn't handle it. Utah. Will bat it in the air as it goes towards their bench. Grizzlies cross center ice. Penner faked on dumping it in. Now I'll feed it across. And Fitz with a shot that goes wide. Fitz on a one-time attempt from the left side. As Kansas City in the right corner. Uh, they'll pin it around the boards as it goes towards the near side. Mavericks cross center ice, and they get blasted. Now Utah comes back the other way. They skeet down the middle. Fitz with a shot saved by Kelly. And he holds on as Fitz skated down the middle, crossed the blue line, and fired away. And Kelly was able to make the stop. 130, uh, 130 is left in the first period. As Grizz will have an offensive zone draw, I believe. As Utah leads 1-0. Oh, it's going to be another penalty. It looks like uh, slashing is going to be a call. Who's it going to be on? 
It's going to be on Kansas City. So Cole Koski's in the penalty box now. Two minutes for slashing. So the Grizzlies go on the power play for the second time tonight. 1.30 is left in the first period. Zach Sekos will take the draw. Utah is 3 for 32 on the power play after their, their goal. Tardif scored 14-15 in. Off the draw, it rolls off the Kansas City stick onto Dylan Kelly, who covers up two seconds into the power play. We'll have another face-off back in the left circle. Mavericks have taken nine shots. Grizzlies have fired seven. Johnny Walker on the ice in the left wing. Sekos will take the face-off against Luke Morgan. Morgan wearing number 25. Utah wins the draw. Nielsen in the left point. Feeds to the slot. It bounced off a grizzly stick. They tried to feed it to the corner and fanned on it. And Kansas City will clear it out. Garrett Metcalf behind his net will nudge it to the far side. Grizzly skating from right to left. It's at neutral ice. Kansas City gets it near their bench and sails it all the way towards Metcalf as it rolls around the boards. Nielsen gets it in the right wing as the Grizzlies cross center ice. They'll dump it in from the left side as it goes towards the right. Cameron right over towards Sekos. He'll feed it across to Tardif. Tardif's on the left side. Gets the Nilsson back to Sekos. What timer he scores! Two power play goals by Utah as Zach Sekos fired away from the right circle. He gets his third of the season. And with 50.2 seconds left in the first, it's the Grizzlies two and the Mavericks nothing. It kind of looked like a replay of the Tardif goal as they pass from the slot onto Sekos. Walker once again out in front trying to redirect it, but it was a direct goal by Sekos, a line shot from his stick to the back of the net. So Zach Sekos and Ben Tardif have power play goals for Utah. Sekos with the goal. We'll see who ends up getting an assist. I imagine Nelson might get another assist there as the Grizz lead 2 nothing on two power play goals. As Utah crosses center ice after winning the faceoff and dumping it in as we're back to five-on-five five skating. Kansas City around the wall. Right side is a bounced off a of Grizzly. Now Utah over to the right circle. Feeds it to the towards the goal line. Grizz in the attack zone. Up top for Bartley. Bartley with a shot that bounces off the boards as Kansas City boxing out with Dakota Raby. He's battling along the near side near the corner as Raby gets pushed by Calvis. Now Kansas City will carry it out of the zone. Mavericks. Will skate to the right wing. They'll dump it into the corner. McDonald around the net. Less than 10 seconds left in the first period. Cam Strong crosses center ice and dumps it in. Two seconds left. Kansas City will run after it. And that will do it for 20 minutes over at Cable Dahmer Arena. Two power play goals. Ben Tardif scored 14-15 in. And then Zach Sekos, 19-10 into the first period with 50 seconds left. He lights the lamp. Both goals came from the right circle in very similar spots. They almost looked like replays of each other. Tardif and Cutler with the assist on the Seco goal. So that means that Brandon Cutler's got two assists tonight. His first two points of the season. Tardif already with a multiple point game. One goal and one assist. That's the second straight multiple point game for Tardif, who had one goal and one assist last night. And he had 19 multiple point games last season to lead the Grizzlies. So a good first frame for Utah as they lead two to nothing after 20 minutes of play. Both teams had nine shots. Garrett Metcalf stopped all nine. He saw Dylan Kelly stop seven of nine. We'll recap the first period when we come back. Once again, the score, first intermission, the Siegfried and Jensen intermission reports coming up. It's the Grizzlies two and the Mavericks nothing. You're listening to the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. <laughs> First intermission over at Cable Dahmer Arena. Utah leads 2-0. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Carenza. We're hanging out at Maverick Center. 
as it looked like the show Tad had on the Flow Sports feed being interviewed, and he didn't look like a very happy coach. Two power play goals for the Grizzlies. Coming into play tonight, what was Utah's power play? I think there were two for 31 on the season. Uh, actually, two for 29. Let's give them credit. It was two for 29 coming into play tonight. Uh, 6.9%. I think the inflation rate in 22 is higher than the Grizzlies' power play percentage coming into play this evening. But two power play goals is the difference in the game right now. Utah 2, Kansas City nothing. I think the first half of the first period was dominated by pretty good defensive performances on both sides. It looked like shots were at a premium, and really both teams only had nine shots, which is kind of unusual considering that both teams had three power plays in the first period. So only nine shots either way uh, kind of tells you about the defensive discipline on both teams. Um, you know, we were skating five on five the first eight minutes of play, and then Keaton Jamison got a high sticking minor. I was able to see it. It was one of those on the puck penalties, and it was a good call by Alex Normandin. Uh, while Jamison was in the penalty box, Ben Tardif got a holding minor, 948 in. So it was late in the Jamison penalty that Tardif got a holding minor. So Kansas City had a brief five on three. While Tardif was in the box a minute and a half later, I think it was 135 later, Dakota Raby got a high sticking minor. And Kansas City had a 35 second five on three once again. Grizz did a good job on the five-on-three as well as the five-on-four after Tardif came out of the box. Uh, the penalty kill was outstanding, and Metcalf made a couple big saves uh, while Kansas City was on the power play as the Mavericks were able to get two or three good looks on him. But uh, Garrett displaying a really strong glove, a quick glove here this evening, and he's been outstanding. And really, as we mentioned before, he's been outstanding against Kansas City as this is the he's three and one all time against the Mavericks but the last three appearances against Kansas City he is three and oh with a 940 save percentage as he has allowed seven goals in the last 10 periods against the Mavericks so Garrett Metcalf's been solid in net his backup tonight is Lucas Parikh uh, Parikh did not dress last night as there was an emergency backup named Mario Vrab, B-R-A-B is last name. He backed up Metcalf, but Garrett's done a good job here this evening. Dylan Kelly for Kansas City has stopped seven of nine. But uh, you think about you know the Grizzlies' penalty kill, and then the Grizzlies got on the power play as Jeremy McKenna got a slashing minor, 13-28 into the first period, and the Grizzlies capitalized as Ben Tardif scored from the right circle. And I think Nilsson was the, I couldn't tell if it was Nilsson or Cutler that threw that pass to Tardiff, but Ben with a one-timer from the right circle. Uh, Johnny Walker was out in front of the net trying to get a stick on it, but uh, Tardiff ended up scoring cleanly, and Utah took a one nothing lead. And then later in the first period, Cole Koski got a slashing minor. Actually, before that, Cutler and McKenna dropped the gloves. Uh, McKenna delivered a hit that Cutler took offense with, and you could tell neither guy was used to fighting as there wasn't really any punches being thrown. They just kind of dragged each other. Then McKenna dragged Cutler to the ice, and that was all she wrote for that fight. There was, really wasn't much of a fight to be had, but both guys got five for fighting. Cole Koski got a slashing minor, 18-30. That got Utah back on the power play. And what looked to be a replay of Tardif's goal, Zach Seko's got a one-timer from the right circle. Walker is out in the front of the net trying to redirect it, and Seko's put it away. So it was a clean goal uh, past Dylan Kelly, and Seko's gets his third of the year. I had a feeling he was due. He scored a goal in each of the first two games of the season. Then he went four games without a goal. I should have made it my pick to click, although I think I did a good job because I think I went with Tardiff as my pick to click. On the Seko school, Tardiff and Cutler are listed with the assists. And obviously, sometimes with certain teams in this league, you kind of take the stat sheet with a grain of salt as they could end up making some mistakes and you have to go back and correct them. But right now, Tardiff and Sekos have the goals. Nielsen has an assist, Tardiff with an assist, which means Tardiff's got one goal and one assist tonight. That's the second straight multiple point game for Tardiff here against Kansas City. And Brandon Cutler already with two assists tonight. And uh, you think about him last season, the first half of the year. In 23 games, he had 10 goals and 17 assists, 27 points in 23 games. And then he was loaned to the Abbotsford Canucks on January 5th, and he stayed with the Canucks throughout the rest of last season. He was in AHL camp with the Manitoba Moose. 
uh, which is the same spot that Tyler Penner was in, and former Grizzly Matthew Boucher, who signed with Iowa, he and, and um, you know two games into his Iowa Heartlander stint, ended up getting called up to the or got loaned to the Belleville Senators, and he's currently in Belleville right now, which is probably good for him because Iowa came into play tonight with an 0 and 6 record. Iowa is off tonight, so they stay 0 and 6 throughout the Saturday night. We'll talk with Guy Carenza here in a couple minutes. Well, let's get to some scores from around the world of sports. A busy night in the league. A few games have already gone final. Adirondack defeats the Trois Rivières Lions 6-1. to Newfoundland defeats Maine 5-2. to South Carolina over Atlanta 4-2. to Second intermission, Florida leads Jacksonville 4-1. to I think that game was scoreless after one period. All the action taking place in the second period. And it looks like Cassette, uh, uh, <laughs> never mind. Somebody for Florida's got two goals. I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> we don't see Florida this year anyway. Uh, second intermission, Indy leads Kalamazoo 3 0. Also, after two periods, Redding leads Wheeling 4 2. After two periods, Savannah leads Greenville 3 0. Early third period, Worcester leads Norfolk 3 2. Cincinnati leads uh, Toledo. Late second period, 2-1. to one. Late first period, Tulsa leads Wichita, 1-0. That game with four minutes left in the first. As Weiniger uh, scored for Tulsa, 5-0-4 in. Looks like the former Grizzly, Evan Beitenheis, is in net for the Thunder. He has stopped 9 of 10. And getting underway in about 20 minutes from now over at Idaho Central Arena, the 2-4 and four Rapid City Rush take on the 5-1 and one Idaho Steelheads. Still, that's right now are in first place in the Mountain Division. At the half, BYU and Boise State are tied at seven. BYU scored in the first period. Looks like Boise State scored in the second quarter as uh, they are tied at seven at halftime on FS2. Do you have FS2 at home? I know I do. And uh, doggone it, I just remember I forgot to record the game. Hopefully, FS2 will have a replay later on at BYU and Boise State. Utah fans say, who cares? Utes, Utes are up 21-7 to uh, over Arizona. That game, eight minutes left in the second. And uh, do you have Pac-12 Network? That's another question. Uh, I know I do, <laughs> but doggone it, I forgot to record that game as well. Um, other scores in the top 25, the big game earlier today, Georgia defeated Tennessee 27-13. to I imagine Georgia is going to be the number one team in the country when they have the college football playoffs uh, standings come out on Tuesday. Well, we'll come back and we'll talk with Guy Carenza, and I'll regret my decision to not record either the BYU or Utah games on channels that I believe, believe it or not, I actually do get. And we'll also talk about why Hockey Fights Cancer Night over in Kansas City means something to me this season. Utah leads 2 to nothing on two power play goals. We'll be back after this on the Grizzlies Intermission Report presented by Siegfried and Jensen. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Good news. It looks like my sister is recording the second half of the BYU-Boise State game, and since it's tied at 7, I can watch the end of that. Now, we don't know about the Utes game. They're up 21-7, to seven, but the BYU game is being recorded. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Carenza hanging out at Maverick Center as Grizzlies do power play goals. Hey, power play was a little bit slow and getting going this season, but Tardif with a power play goal, and then about five minutes later, Sekos on what looked to be the exact same play, scores from the right circle, as uh, that's the difference in the game right now. Yeah, special teams were big coming into this game for the Grizzlies, as both of the, they're, they're bad in both categories. I mean, the power play was around 7%, and they were sitting uh, at the bottom of the league standings in those categories, but the story throughout the whole series, really, against Kansas City has been special teams, and the Grizzlies have hit uh, the nail on the head here today. I mean, they've scored two power play goals, something they haven't done in a while, and uh, their penalty kill has been three for three. They've been perfect. Yeah, that's really the special team has been the difference in the game. And one, you know, when Kansas City was on the power play, it seemed like they 
had the power play exclusively for about four minutes there as Utah committed three separate penalties. Uh, Garrett Metcalf made some big saves. He's looked outstanding here through one period. Yeah, Metcalf has been, Metcalf has been great. He's uh, building upon his performance from last night. And as we said again, you know, you mentioned the Grizzlies having a good defensive performance. Penalty kill has been awesome. Utah's dominated the second periods. Now they can really put this game away with a strong second period again. They scored three goals in the first nine minutes of the second period last night. They also outscored Kansas City 1-0 uh, on Tuesday in the second period. They've outscored the opposition 8-3 to this season in the second periods. What does Utah need to do here in the, fun, in the next 20 minutes to really secure control of this game? Yeah, Tyson, you're right. The Grizzlies seem to be a second period team. They were like that last year, and it seems like that trend is more of the same this year. So I expect them to have a big period uh, coming up, and I would say just stay disciplined, stay out of the penalty box. Your penalty kill has been great. You don't want to keep them out on the ice. So stay out of the penalty box and make the most of your opportunities. Build upon your lead and get them going into the third. Outside of the special teams and Garrett Metcalf's performance, anything else stand out to you about the first period? That fight with Brandon Cutler and Jeremy McKenna, that was an interesting one. Uh, very pre very uh, peculiar because you wouldn't expect those guys to fight. Brandon Cutler, 6'1", 195. McKenna, 5'10", 174. Strange one. They, I mean, they both kind of just got each other in a headlock and went straight down. But I like that energy from Brandon Cutler. The Grizzlies needed that and uh, build upon it in the second. Cutler with two first period assists. We'll talk with Guy during the second intermission as we'll come back and have second period action. It's Hockey Fights Cancer Night over in Kansas City. And boy, that's um, unfortunately, that's um, hit home hard for me as it looks like my mom is battling cancer right now and doesn't look like the prognosis is all that good. I think that um, she's given about six months to live. And so it's um, Hockey Fights Cancer Night. The Grizzlies. Fight Cancer Night will be on February 24th, and I just hope my mom's still around for that one. Uh, second period action will continue at Cable Dahmer Arena. First intermission, Utah leads 2-0 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. All right, we'll bring the mood up just a little bit. I haven't slept much all weekend. I was terrible on the broadcast last night, and now everybody knows why. So yeah, hopefully uh, we'll have a fun final two periods of play, and we certainly root Kansas City as uh, they're, um, they've got Hockey Fights Cancer Night over at Cable Dahmer, and we're certainly with the Kansas City Mavericks in that regard. Grizzlies Fight Cancer Night will be on February 24th as Utah will take on the Allen Americans in the second of a three-game series. I'm really looking forward to the upcoming homestand for the Grizzlies, which will be highlighted by Pooch on the Pond on Friday, November 18th. That's going to be the second game of a three-game series against the Idaho Stillheads. And later on in the homestand, a Pride Night will be on Thanksgiving weekend as the Grizzlies take on the trois Rivieres Lions for a three-game set. I think in that series, when you talk about all the names that are going to be difficult to pronounce, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that weekend off. I'm just going to say, Guy, you got that weekend. You're, you've got 12 Rivieres, um, if I'm even saying that right. Who guy, knows? Guy, guy's got that weekend. Thanksgiving weekend, I might just say, I'm taking a vacation. <laughs> and that will, be, that will be Guy's series. So you can get the, the lines for, uh, from the, the Three Rivers over in the Canada area. And we'll talk about some of the big promotions uh, all through the season, as Pooch on the Pond will be on Friday, November 18th, and then Pride Night is going to be on Saturday, November 26th. Note the night, Saturday, November 26th, presented by FedEx as Pride Night, second annual Pride Night. I really like the Grizzlies' Pride Night jerseys last season, and we'll see if the Grizzlies go with a different look or if they're going to go with something similar to what they had last season. 
And I'm really looking forward to mid-December, the Teddy Bear Toss and Ugly Sweater Night. And that will be against the Kansas City Mavericks on Saturday, December 17th, as that will be a 7 o'clock face-off. Looking forward to that. And we want to certainly do a lot better with our Teddy Bear Toss Night. You see some of those arenas like the Hershey Bears in the AHL, some of those other places, and you see thousands of teddy bears on the ice. I'm going to start talking about Teddy Bear Toss Night right now on Saturday, December 17th, because we want to have that sort of showing at Maverick Center. I want to see the ice littered with teddy bears for the Teddy Bear Toss on December 17th as the Kansas City Mavericks will be at Maverick Center for the second of a two-game series. So a lot of fun stuff happening at Maverick Center. I did see a little bit of the video board. I did see the video board light up that's going to be at center ice. Boy, the colors look bright, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that when it's available. Hopefully it will be for the upcoming homestand. If not, later on in the year, that video board will be available for Grizzlies fans to watch, and it will certainly be a big upgrade to Maverick Center as the place will look a little bit different next time fans come by in a couple weeks when the Idaho Steelheads are in town. Well, we're about set to start second period action. Both teams had nine shots in the first period. It's pretty simple. The Grizzlies' penalty kill is outstanding, and the power play gets two goals. As Ben Tardif scored 14-15 in, and then less than about five minutes later, Zach Sekos, on what looked to be an instant replay of Tardif's goal, he found the back of the net as both guys scored on one-timers from the right circle. They'll put 20 minutes on the clock over at Cable Dahmer Arena. Dylan Kelly will be in net for the second period. On Tuesday night, it was Shane Sterrett getting the start for Kansas City, and he got the victory. And last night, it was Dylan Kelly who stopped 26 of 30. Garrett Metcalf started on Friday night, and he got the victory there, and he stopped all nine in the first period. Tuesday night, it was Lucas Preak getting the start for the Grizzlies, and he is the backup goaltender tonight. Utah will be skating from left to right. As we see it on Flow Sports, in your mind's eye, see it on YouTube. Kansas City will be skating from right to left. Utah, in the two games in this series, has outscored Kansas City 4-0. Utah, this season, has outscored the opposition 8-3 in the second period. And remember last year, the Grizzlies had a plus-29 goal differential in the second period, which was second best in the league. Toledo was a plus-32 in the second period with a goal differential. Draught center ice is won by Utah. As Connor McDonald gets it, he's back in his own zone. He feeds it across to Victor Bartley. Bartley, the former... Nashville Predator and Montreal Canadian as it goes deep into the Mavericks zone as Utah behind the net chips it across to Pfizer. He's in the corner. He'll get it up top for McDonald. Connor with a shot that's blocked and puck ends up squirting towards the left corner. As Utah gets it, they'll skate around the net as the Grizz get checked along the boards. As I think we're back to five on five skating is actually we're, we're five on five to start the period as Utah did score in the final minute. Passage off around his net as he'll feed it to the far side for Luke Morgan. Morgan will skate towards his corner. I'm going to try all night to call him Luke Martin, the Grizzlies defenseman from last year. He'll throw a left wing pass. Passage off skates to the circle, take a shot. That one goes wide. Metcalf might have gotten a piece of it. Right point. Kansas City throws it off the screen. We got a Grizzly down as Zach Sekos is holding his face. Well, Kansas City was in the right point, fed it off the screen, and I wonder if either the puck or the follow-through uh, got Sekos. As Colin Lee, the Grizzlies trainer, is going to be looking over Zach. There is a towel towards Sekos' face right now. 57 seconds into the second period, and I'm happy to say that Colin Lee does have a full head of hair. He doesn't have any bald spots on the top of his head as he has leaned over to check on Sekos. Colin Lee, the Grizzlies trainer, sporting a beard as Sekos... Oh, he might, he might have gotten hit near the mouth area as Colin Lee. Now Sekos gets to his feet. Well, hopefully Zach's going to be okay as he got hit either with a puck or with the high stick. I imagine it was a puck. Sekos will skate towards the bench as he'll get looked over by Colin Lee, the Grizzlies trainer. The equipment manager, Mason Wayland, is working on a stick right now. 57 seconds into the second period. Zach Sekos being looked at by Pfizer and Strong on the bench. Draw is going to be in the Grizzlies zone. Must have just been an accident as no penalty is called on Kansas City. Draws in the right circle, and it's won by Utah. As Cameron Wright crosses center ice, he'll dump it in. Tardif chases after it. Uh, Sam Brook, he gets, delivers a hit. Jameson gets pinned to the boards. 
Kansas City gathers it, and they'll feed it out to center ice. Looking for Cole Koski. He couldn't reach it. Puck glides deep into the Grizzlies zone. Nielsen feeds it across to Clerman. Nate will get it ahead. Utah still in their own zone. Tardif will carry it out to neutralize. He'll feed a right-wing pass to right. He tried to get it back to Tardif on the give-and-go. Tardif skates along the end wall, tried to get it to Jamison. He gets held up again. Kansas City feeds it across. Right tries to pick it off. It's taken by Tardif on the right point. He'll feed it to the left side. Now back to Clerman. Over to Jamison in the far corner. He gets spun around and gets divorced in the puck as Kansas City takes it. As they'll dump it in. I looked like a guy was trying to reach for it on the right side and didn't connect on it, and icing is called on the Mavericks. It looked like Kolkowski was pretty upset about it. And, well, if it is nice, and they let they just let him skate towards the bench as the draw is going to be in the in the um, Grizzlies zone. Josh Lamb will be out there for Kansas City. 18-14 left in the second. Utah leads 2-0 behind two power play goals. Neither team has taken a shot here so far in the second. Tardif will take the face off against Josh Lamb. And the draw actually was Cutler that took the face off, and he wins it. And Cutler already with two assists tonight. Pfizer over to Cutler. He'll take a shot that gets blocked. And now a hit delivered by Dakota Raby along the near boards. Kansas City clears it out to the Utah blue line. Mavericks will nudge it towards Metcalf. Garrett out of his net will spin it along the near wall. Mavericks fan on a shot, and it goes to Nilsson. He gets blasted over in the corner, taken by Brandon Cutler. And now down the middle, Utah will skate towards the left. Clerman will bounce it off the wall as it spins around the boards. Calvis will get it over to Dalton Golly. Back to Calvis as Kansas City does have a big set of defensemen. Mavericks will dump it in onto Metcalf, and Garrett covers up two and a half minutes into the second period. And Kansas City's going to have an offensive zone draw. It's 2 nothing Utah, and neither team's taken a shot officially so far in the second period. Make sure to follow the Grizzlies on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as TikTok. Believe it or not, the Grizzlies do have a pretty strong presence on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, but you can find me on Twitter, at Tyson on Sports. Maybe I should get a TikTok. I don't know. I downloaded it once and then immediately deleted it. Guys, should I get a TikTok? Hey, put it on, put it on a poll right there on the live chat. Make, make, can we do a poll question? Should I get a TikTok? <laughs> the draw is going to be over on the left side as they're going to work on some ice over near the corner. Speaking of that live chat, it's probably too late now, but that's where we're going to do our picks to click over on the YouTube feed, the live chat that's on the Grizzlies YouTube channel. That's where you can find the audio stream of every Grizzlies game, uh, regular season and playoff game this season. Grizzlies hockey also on Flow Sports. They're working on some ice in the corner, and the faceoff is going to be in the Grizzlies zone. Now they're working in the left circle. As Kansas City does have pretty good ice over at Cable Dahmer Arena. But then again, Boise last weekend, they had some issues with their ice with an ice compressor going down, and that's one of the best ice surfaces in the league. So it looks like they finally got the trash can on. Oh, it's still out there as they're working on some ice over in the left corner. If you joined us late, Utah leads 2 to nothing as they scored two power play goals. Utah had two power play goals in the first six games of the regular season. And, of course, they matched that total with two goals in the first. Ben Tarda, 14-15 in. Nilsson and Cutler got the assist there. And then 19-10 into the first period. Sekos got his third of the year. Tardif and Cutler with the assist. Tyler Penner will take the draw against Jake Jeremko. I'm almost thinking about Jonas Jeremko, the former NBA player that played for the Pistons, Celtics, and Utah Jazz for a little bit as well. As the draw goes over to the left corner, Kyle Pouncey gets it. He'll feed it across to Raby. Dakota will lift it into the air. It bounces at neutral ice. Bryson Martin crosses center ice. He'll feed it to the left side. Raby point, shot. That one gets blocked. Raby over in the left corner. He's got good speed. He'll center it to Martin. Bryson with a shot. Kick saved by Kelly. Over to Pouncey. So he'll bounce it off the boards. Grizzlies around the net. They'll get it over to Martin. Left wing, shot. That one goes wide as it rolls along the near boards. Pouncey gets it to the corner. Penner with a shot saved by Kelly. As the Grizzlies get one look after another and after the whistle, Johnny Walker gets pushed as oh, a couple Mavericks want to get after Johnny Walker. Tristan Mullen and Walker wants to get after somebody other than Mullen. Looks like Walker wants to get after Dalton Golly. Oh, Golly's 6'5 and 227 pounds. Walker goes about 6 feet and 193. Johnny, remember, was in front of the net for each of Utah's two goals trying to create some action. And after the whistle, he creates some action as well. 
what are the odds that the Kansas City broadcaster right there just said there's a little extracurricular after the whistle? That seems to be the main hockey cliche. I know even Kenny Albert uses it time and time again. Hey, we're having fun on a Saturday night. If I'm not going to laugh, I'm going to end up crying here this weekend. <laughs> so, hey, we're about three minutes into the second period. Draw is going to be in the Mavericks zone. Johnny Walker looks like he's going to stay on the ice. Penner had a pretty good shift there as well. And Ryan Knast, which is going to continue with those five. As Dalton Kelly, or Dylan Kelly, um, he's in net. He's 6'5 and 216 pounds. Penner will take the draw, and it's won by Kansas City back in their own corner. As they'll feed it over to the left side as Utah leads 2 to nothing, as they lead the shot count in the second period 2 to 1. Kyle Pouncey gets it, and he'll nudge it ahead out towards center ice. It bounced off a of Maverick, and Kansas City will dump it in on to Metcalf. Is it going to be icing? No, we continue to play. As Bryce and Martin will skate towards the near side. Now Penner gets it along the right wing. He crosses center ice, gets across the line, so bounces around the boards, looking for Fitz behind the net. Puck ends up kicking towards the left corner as Fitz back shuts. Now it goes to the left point as Tardif. He'll fire a backhand shot that goes wide. Fitz around the net. He'll skate towards the left side. Fitz has plenty of room, but he'll feed it up top. Lefty one-timer saved by Kelly. As he goes towards the right corner on a rebound, LeBurge, We'll pin it back towards the Kansas City end wall as two Grizzlies battling over there. Now Kansas City nudges it towards the near side. McDonald with a hit. Now another hit delivered by Penner. His play starting to get physical here at Cable Dahmer. Four minutes into the second period, Kansas City finally clears it out to center. Now they'll enter from the left side as Passageov will skate towards the left circle, stop near the corner. He'll skate back towards the point. He'll feed it up top for uh, Nick Kanepke, who played at the University of Nebraska-Omaha for the last four seasons as the Grizzlies throw a blue line to blue line pass, dumping it in, no icing as the Mavericks will get the puck in the near corners. They'll bounce it off the wall. Kansas City will tap it towards the Grizzlies zone. Utah tries to tap it back to center ice, and they do. As right battling, Mavericks will back it out into their own zone. They'll restart the attack from right to left. Kansas City enters down the middle, surrounded by four Grizzlies. Now left circle. Lillette swings and misses. Now he swings and misses again. He swung and missed more than the Phillies did in game four of the World Series there. Over to the left side, Grizzlies skate towards the corner. They stop, feed it up top. Grizzlies left point. Try to get back towards the corner as Utah gets to Tardif on the right side. Ben gets around a skater. Now he stops in the point, twirls a little bit. Now he fires toward the net, and that one gets blocked about five feet in front of Kelly. Kansas City clears it out. Foot race. Now to the right circle. Mavericks with a shot. Saved by Metcalf. That was taken by Luke Morgan. Now it goes back to the high slot. Mavericks will feed it towards the middle. Calvis trying to locate it, but it's Utah that comes up with it. Seco's back on the ice. He got hit in the face, but he's back in there. Why? Because he's a hockey player. That's what he does. He'll dump it in. Kansas City skating from right to left as the Mavericks cross center ice left wing. Dalton Galley gets it in. I tried to center it. Stayed with, with Pouncey as it rolled back towards the corner. Now to Dakota Raby. He's in the right corner of the Grizzlies zone. He gets spun around. Raby holds strong. Penner over there as well. Now Utah comes out of the pile with the puck. Grizz cross center. Cutler steps over the line. Feeds it to the left side. Grizzlies with a lefty shot. That one goes wide. Well, I don't know how that one didn't convert, but Kansas City will carry it out to neutralize. Utah leads 2-0. Mavericks skate towards the right circle to take a shot. That one goes wide. I think that was Garrett Klee, number 20, playing his first game this series. Now left wing shot saved by Metcalf. Muck gets it in the right corner as the Mavericks got the rebound. He'll feed it to Koski behind the net. He's been defended by Victor Bartley. Koski skates towards the right corner. Bartley nearby. As Koski drops off for the corner, he'll skate off the ice. Oh, but the Mavericks were throwing a pass to where Koski was going to be in, was uh, you know skating off the ice too. Mavericks regather the puck. 13-20 left in the second and counting. Utah's still up two nothing as the Mavericks cross center ice. They'll dump it in over towards the near corner. Utah will lift it. Kansas City keeps it in the left point. They'll bounce it to the circle. Mavericks. Hugo Waugh, number 19, will drop it off. As McLaughlin skates towards the goal line, McDonald with a good poke check as it goes back towards the near side. Pfizer battling. He gets knocked down in the corner. Now the Mavericks. Jeremko. Jake's his first name. He'll skate back towards the point. Now he skates towards his right, drops it off for Elms. He'll take a shot on a scorch pass, Metcalf, and into the back of the net. Nate Konepke, number five, fired towards the net. Well, Metcalf thought he had secured it, but it ended up trickling past him. And the Mavericks get on the board. 
That was one that Garrett would like to have back as Konepke gets his second as a professional as the Mavericks get on the board. Well, Konepke with a shot. Mullen was nearby. Metcalf was trying to locate it, but it ended up in the back of the net. As it looked like there might have been a stick that got in the way, and then it looked like it trickled five-hole past Garrett. So kind of an odd-looking play. The Mavericks get on the board, 12.47 left in the second. It's 2-1. to one. Nate Konepke, K-N-O-E-P-K-E. -E. That's a pretty good word if you're in a spelling bee. He gets the second of the year, and he's 6'3", 198 pounds, played his college hockey at the University of Nebraska, Omaha. Mavericks will dump it back into the air, their attack zone as they'll enter from the right side. Where's the puck? It looks like offside are the Mavericks. 12.34 left in the second. Utah 2, Kansas City 1 as Nate Konepke gets the Mavericks on the board. We're back in 30 seconds. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey presented by Mountain Land Supply Company. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Nate Konepke gets Kansas City on the board, 7-13 into the second. Jake Jeremko picks up the assist. As Utah scored two power play goals in the first period, Kansas City with an even strength goal, 7-13 into the second. Utah's outshot Kansas City 13-12. Garrett Metcalf has stopped 11 of 12. Dylan Kelly for Kansas City has stopped 11 of 13. Game six of the World Series. Top of the fourth inning. No score between the Phillies and the Astros. Oh, it's too bad Nick Castellanos wasn't at the plate during the first intermission. He could have homered right there or towards the latter portion of the intermission. As Utah wins the drop, as Clorman will get the puck in the right wing, he'll cross center ice and backhand it into the zone. Kansas City runs after it. They're wearing a white jersey with orange in the middle of the jersey. And it's all a turnover in front. Uh, but Kansas City kicks it back towards the right side. Clorman in the attack zone. He'll skate towards his left. Clorman looking for a toe drag. He'll get it to Tardif. Ben with a shot. Save. Rebound. And it goes to the corner. Oh, the Grizzlies were looking for a redirection. Utah up top for Nelson. He winds and fires. Saved by Kelly. And the Kansas City hold, uh, goaltender holds on to that blast. As... Nilsson fired away from the high slot. Utah on a couple of occasions looking for a redirection, but uh, the puck ended up cleanly going to the Kansas City goaltender. And Dylan Kelly doesn't give you much of the net. Because after all, he goes about 6'5 and 216 pounds. 12.01 is left in the second period. Utah is up to 14 shots. Kansas City's taken 13. As Sekos will take the draw. He got hit in the face earlier in the second period, but he's back in there. Cameron Wright's out there as well. Drop, rolls along the near boards. I think Kansas City won that face off, and they'll clear it into the Grizzlies zone. Clarman runs after it, and the great skater out of Notre Dame will cut behind the net. Now start the attack with a left-wing pass. Grizz get it across to right. Right in the right side, gets knocked down, gets on one knee, gets back to his feet, fires a sharp-angled shot that goes wide. Now Clarman skates towards his right, will feed it to the slot. As Tardif over in the right side of the circle, he'll skate towards the goal line. I oh, tried to feed it out in front and bounced off a body. Right with a shot saved by Kelly. Now Wright will feed it up top for Clorman. Now to Tardif. He'll feed it to Nelson. Left side. Oh, I tried to bounce it off a Maverick out in front looking for a redirection. It goes all the way out to the Grizzlies. So that one had to hurt the block shot by the Mavericks. As Nelson has it back, he'll feed it to the center ice area. Grizz. Will carry it into the zone. Tardif drops it off. Walker with a shot. And he scores. Grizzlies get back on the board. Is that Johnny Walker? It is. Johnny Walker gets his first of the year as the all-time leading goal scorer in Arizona State history. High fives everybody on the Grizzlies bench as Johnny is on the board for the 2022-23 season. Utah's taking a three-to-one lead. Nelson threw it out to Tardif. Tardif dropped it off for Walker, who was skating down the middle, and Johnny fired away. Boy, that was a blast. That There was no way Dylan Kelly was going to make that save as he barely saw it. Walker should get the goal, and the assists go to Tardif and Nelson. Boy, Nelson's done an outstanding job with assists. That's his second assist tonight 
And for Ben Tardiff, he now has one goal and two assists. And props to the Kansas City broadcast for showing the visiting goals as well as the home goals. Very professional there. And we got a goalie change. Dylan Kelly has been pulled. Riley Morris has taken over. Morris wears number one. He's appeared in one game this season. Draw one by Kansas City. They get out to center ice. Grizzlies pick it off. Penner gets it back to Walker. Right point will take a shot that bounces off of Jeremko. Stays in plays. It's behind the Kansas City goal line as Fitz gets pinned along the wall. Now Kansas City will t nudge it ahead. It goes past Walker into the Grizzlies zone. Now the Grizz have it, and it's Johnny Walker, the goal scorer. He gets his first of the season about a minute ago. Walker, center ice, will dump it in. Riley Morris gloves it from center ice, and he holds on as a whistle blows. 10, 10 is left in the second period. Utah leads 3-1 to one as Johnny Walker gets Utah back a two-goal lead as he scored his first of the year with Tardiff and Nelson getting the assist. Time of the Walker goal, 8.56 into the second period. And with that, Dylan Kelly was pulled. He stopped 14 of 17. Riley Morris, who played last season at Mount Royal University, a Calgary, Alberta native, he is in net, 25 years old, 5'10", 207 pounds. Draw one by Kansas City in their own zones. They kicked it over towards Jeremko. He's battling. Utah gets it. Cutler with a right wing shot saved by Morris. Rebound Kansas City will throw it out to center ice. Mavericks cross center and dump it in as they get to their goal line. As the Mavericks along the goal line behind Metcalf's net, they'll feed it to the near side. Kansas City looking for a centering feed. It kicks out to the right circle. Shot saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to Utah. We're halfway through the scheduled 60 minutes of play as Utah's got goals from Ben Tardiff, Zach Sekos, and Johnny Walker. As Jeremko along the near side gets it poked away by Cutler. Kansas City kept it in in the left point as the Mavericks. We'll kick it around the boards. It's cut off by Victor Bartley. He'll get it ahead to Cutler. Now the Grizz cross center ice. Tardiff already with one goal and two assists tonight. Dakota Raby dumps it in. Pfizer in the area. And Raby tried to find it to Pfizer. Ends up going to the right corner. Grizzly skate over there. Utah leads 3-1. to one. As Utah gets tripped up on the right side, referee didn't spot it. As the Mavericks kick over to the left side. Now they feed it across the boards. Utah skates down there. Metcalf wants icing, and the linesman agrees. Icing on the Mavericks, 9-21. It's left here in the second period. It's also been a great game for Brandon Cutler and Andrew Nelson as both guys have two assists. It's the rubber match. Kansas City won on Tuesday night. 3-2, to two. and then last night the Grizzlies in overtime got a 4-3 to three victory. Utah so far is 2-2 two and two on the current eight-game road trip, as this is game five of eight straight away from Maverick Center. Next week, the Grizzlies will be in Allen, Texas, next Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Secos will take the draw against Hugo Watt, draw in the Kansas City zone. It's won by Utah. Tardiff around the Kansas City net. He looks to center it. Shot, all oh, the Grizzlies couldn't get one off. Kansas City skates from right to left, and their backup goaltender, Riley Morris, is in there replacing Dylan Kelly. Mavericks feed it over to the slot, and offside is a call. Pass the job, tried to keep it in, but the linesmen were in the right spot at the right time to make the right call. Offside are the Mavericks. 9.03 is left in the second period, and it looks like there's a timeout on the ice. We'll take one as well. Utah leads 3-1 to one on the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Rio Tinto. <laughs> Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. It's the Grizzlies three and the Mavericks one. 903 is left in the second period. Utah got a second period goal from Johnny Walker, 856 in. Tardiff and Nelson with the assist. Utah's outshot Kansas City 9 to 4 in the second period and 18 to 13 overall for the game. Grizzlies are two for three on the power play. Kansas City is 0 for 3. Neutral zone draws. Kansas City was called for offside before the 
uh, last whistle as the uh, draw ends up rolling back to Riley Morris. He'll give it to Dalton Golly, G-A-L-L-Y. And good golly, he gets it out to center ice, but Utah picks it off. Pass up ahead. Grizzly under the offensive zone. Right gets it poked away as pass to job. Left side, his pass is picked off once again. And now to the right side. Mavericks get it. They feed it across. It hits off the boards and looks like it exits play as a fan gets a souvenir. 8.39 left in the second. Jeremy McKenna was in the area. Draw is going to be in the Grizzly zone. And this is certainly a big one. You've been thinking about the barometer of a successful road trip or not. You know, Utah split two games against Idaho last week. That's to be expected because uh, of how good Idaho is at their barn. Uh, you know, against a team like Kansas City, you win two out of three. You call that a success. And then you go to Allen, you win two out of three. Before you know it, you got a five and three road trip, and you'll take that any day of the week, especially with as tough as it is to win on the road. Slot shot. That one gets blocked as Kansas City won the faceoff. Walker gets hit in the corner. Pouncy in the area as Bryson Martin gets dumped to the ice. Kansas City to the right side. Skates towards the point. Now they'll skate towards their left side as the Mavericks drop it off. Now they'll get to Tommy Muck. Slot shot saved by Metcalf. Rebound out in front. Garrett's on his keister as the puck ends up in the near corner. As Utah will clear it back to center ice. Dylan Fitz cuts it off. And he'll dump it in as Kansas City will backpedal to their goal line as McLaughlin skates around his net. Now he'll carry it out to center ice. He'll skate down the middle. He'll dump it in as it bounces off of Fitz. Now the Mavericks look for the front door. Shot saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to Utah. Now left wing. Mavericks with a shot. They swing and miss. Utah will get it, and they'll bounce it off the glass. It goes out to center ice. Jake McLaughlin gets it for Kansas City. As he'll go D to D. Now it goes back to McLaughlin. 7.35 and counting left in the second. 3-1 Utah. As the, Gri as the Garrett Klee looks to center it. Grizzlies pick it off, and they'll skate towards the left corner. McDonald over to Cutler. Cutler couldn't handle it as the Mavericks will throw it to the left wing. Lefty shot saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to Utah. Johnny Walker gets out to center ice. He'll dump it in. Walker gets blasted. Oh, and that looked like a hit that one that uh, is going to Walker's still down. Now it looks like everybody has grabbed a dance partner. McDonald over there. Kyle Pouncey as well as Walker got hit at center ice, and I think Pouncey was the first one to take offense. Hopefully Walker gets back to his feet as he got blasted at center ice. Cole Koski is yelling at, at uh, McDonald. Walker is on two knees being checked out by the trainer, Colin Lee. Pouncey was over there as well. And nobody looked like they dropped the gloves. Three Mavericks and two Grizzlies were over there. But it looked like uh, Grizzly did want to drop the gloves on Kansas City. So we'll certainly have some penalties there. I don't know if there's going to be a penalty on the hit to Walker. Uh, but afterwards, there might be something as Walker back to the bench. And he's being checked out by Colin Lee. It looks like Walker might be a little bit woozy. As play looks like it's getting physical again. The referee, Alex Normandin, is talking with the captains pass the job of kansas city and mcdonald for utah we'll see if either team gets a power play out of this as utah leads three to one with 7 12 left in the second now normandon's going to talk with the scores table right it should be offsetting penalties unless something gets called on the hit to walker i would imagine Special teams have gone the Grizzlies' way here so far as both benches are just looking on trying to figure out what the situation is going to be for the next few minutes. Make sure to follow the Grizzlies on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as the referee and Andrew Nelson exchange a couple words with each other. Now Normandin's talking with Ryan Kanaswich. Kanaswich is pointing towards the area that Walker got hit and says that there should be more than there is. One of the assistant captains for Kansas City is in the penalty box now. Um, doesn't look like Kanasiewicz is entirely thrilled with the situation. Uh, he wanted a penalty on the hit to Walker, but doesn't look like there's going to be any. Looks like we're going to skate four on four for five minutes, according to the score bug. So, so looks like we'll be skating four on four for a while. Uh, Tad O'Had gets the explanation from the referee. It looks like Kyle Pouncey gets two minutes for roughing. Josh Lamon gets five minutes for boarding. So the hit does count for something. Um, so we'll see, uh, so it looks like it's going to be four on four for two minutes, but Lamon got a boarding major. 
Um, but it uh, looks like we're going to skate four on four here as 7.05 is left in the second. It could be a boarding minor. Maybe it's the it's possible the box scores wrong. As we're skating four on four for two minutes, Kansas City wins the faceoff. And with Utah up three to one, Kansas City wants to hold on to the puck for a little bit and kind of play this as you would a three on three overtime situation. Mavericks will feed it off the near boards. It goes to Tristan Mullen, who had one goal and one assist on Tuesday night. Mavericks skate into the zone, but they're offside. 6.44 left in the second. Draw's going to be at neutral ice. Last night in the third period, Kansas City scored a four-on-four goal. They actually scored like five seconds into the four-on-four situation. Utah this season has scored one goal on a four-on-four situation. They've allowed one goal, four-on-four, and that came last night. 6.44 is left in the second. Draw near the penalty box area is won by Kansas City. As they're at neutral ice, they'll skate towards their left. Now they'll enter the zone. Kansas City makes a nice move around. Clarman takes a shot saved by Metcalf. Tardif gets it. Ben's already got one goal and two assists tonight. He'll feed it to Cameron Wright. Wright was the number one star last night. Couldn't split the double team as Kansas City pokes it away. Mavericks cross center ice. They don't have numbers as they'll just skate across Jeremy McKenna. But he skated across maybe a little bit too casually in Kansas City. Uh, skated offside as the timing was messed up a little bit. 106 left in the four on four. 617 left in the second period. It looks like a good crowd over at Cable Dama Arena. Maybe the best crowd of the three games in the series. Utah will have three days off, but they're not going to return home. They're actually going to fly from Kansas City over to Texas, to Allen, Texas, which is about a half-hour drive from Dallas. As the Mavericks win the draw at neutral ice, as they'll spread the ice in the four-on-four -four situation, as Kansas City will skate into the right point and try to drop it off. Utah picks it off. Grizz want to be patient with their approach four-on-four -four here as well. As Utah stations himself behind Metcalf, and it's Zach Sekos. Sekos fakes to his right. He'll give it to Bartley, who switches places with Sekos. Now Bartley will feed it over to Sekos. He crosses center ice. Left wing will gain the line. Skates towards the circle with speed. He'll take a shot saved by Morris. Rebound. Backhand shot saved by Morris again. Two shots by Sekos as the rebound goes to the right corner. As Kansas City will skate around the net. 20 seconds left in the four-on-four. Four. That's the Mavericks. We'll throw it to center ice. They'll carry it across left wing. And Sandbrook gets it poked away as Utah will feed it back towards their own goal line. Seven seconds left in the four on four as Utah pitches to the near side. Penner will throw it across. It hits off the boards near Utah's bench. Grizz will skate it out to the left corner, drop it off for Pfizer. Taren with a shot. And that one goes wide as it looks like it bounces off the protective netting. So now it looks like. The Grizzlies are going to be on a power play for three minutes. So we had a four-on-four -four situation. Here's what it was. Lamon got five minutes for boarding. He got a boarding major. Pouncey got a two-minute roughing minor. Well, Pouncey's two minutes are now up, and Lamon's still in the box serving his major. So the Grizzlies are on the power play for the next two minutes and 56 seconds. So they'll have, you know, three minutes, a five-on-four power play. And since it is a major, if Utah scores here, I think they should stay on the power play given the, the nature of a major penalty. Cutler will take the face off on the left side. Johnny Walker and Theo Calvis exchange some words. I don't know what it is about, it is about Johnny Walker, nicknamed the Worm, but he seems to get under the skin of just about every opposing player he plays against. It seems like he's always in some sort of skirmish. Cutler will take the face off. Wright is on the left wing of him. As the draw taken by Yelen, y y Loren Yolette. And the draw won by Utah. Grizzlies lead by two. As Nilsson will feed it to the left side. Grizz, skate to the circle, take a shot saved by Morrison. Utah with a wraparound shot and a score! Brandon Cutler with a wraparound as he gets his first of the season. And Utah's taking a 4-1 lead. Boy, there was some action out in front of the net. Then Cutler skated around the net and just kind of looked for that wraparound and saw an opening and fired away. So Brandon gets his first of the season. He's got one goal and two assists tonight. That could be another assist for Nilsson. Cutler took a shot. Morris made the save. Then Cutler got the rebound, skated around the net. Calvis was trying to cut him off, but Cutler was able to skate in. So Brandon Cutler gets a goal. His first of the season, that's going to be another assist for Andrew Nilsson. That is Nilsson's third assist of the night. 
Grizzlies, remember, will stay on the power play as Kansas City is serving a major. 4-1 Utah. They stay on the power play. And off the draw, the arm is raised by the referee. It's going to be a penalty on Kansas City. Matt Grizzlies will dump it in as Kansas City will get another penalty right off the faceoff. So the Grizzlies look like they're going to get a five-on-three for two minutes. Boy, you talk about an interesting sequence of events. Utah can pretty much put this game away if they find a way to get to the back of the net. So the Mavericks have another guy in the penalty box. Looks like it's Sam Brook, um, Jordan Sam Brook. And it looks like it's going to be a five on three for two minutes. 4.55 is left in the second period. Utah leads four to one. Cutler's goal was scored 15.05 in. That was a power play goal. Utah's got three power play goals so far tonight. And now they got the two-man advantage with 2.33 uh, for the next two minutes. I think it might have been Johnny Walker, the worm, that drew that penalty off the faceoff. As the draw won by Utah, as they'll skate over to the right side. As Tardif, already with a good night. He'll get it up top for Cutler, who's got one goal and two assists. Back to Tardif. Ben. Will skate towards the slot. Back to Nelson. What timer saved by Morris. Rebound goes back to Nelson along the near boards. Nelson will feed it to the near goal line. Now the Grizzlies skate back towards the point. Cutler over to Tardif. Ben will skate towards his left. And he'll stop. He's in the right circle. As Tardif will fake to his left. Tardif gets it across to Pfizer. Now to the far goal line for Walker. Back up top for Pfizer. He fakes a shot and gets to Nelson. Andrew. In the right point over to Tardif. Back to Pfizer. One-timer save. Rebound shot and a score! And that's Brandon Cutler's second of the game as Utah's taking a 5-1 lead. Boy, what a critical sequence for Utah. They've scored four power play goals tonight. Brandon Cutler scores two goals on this major power play. And remember, the Grizzlies will stay with a 5-on-4 power play for the next minute, 46. The shot was taken from the left side. I think it was Nelson bounced off of Morris, and Cutler got the rebound and scored. So that could be Nelson's fourth assist tonight. He got an assist on the Cutler first goal uh, earlier in the power play, and I think Nelson could get another assist here on this most recent goal that was scored 16-02 win. Utah 5, Kansas City 1. Mavericks still shorthanded as the Grizzlies are making Kansas City pay for that major. Utah gets the puck skating from left to right. Grizz will get it to Cameron Wright. He'll enter the zone. He'll feed it across to Dylan Fitz. Fitz up top to Martin. Now the Grizz get towards the left circle. Raby tries to feed it across, but the puck exits the zone. Grizzlies will reset. 118 left in the Grizzlies power play. Utah's got four power play goals tonight. Utah gets dumped into their own bench. That's Loren Yulette. Yulette just fired Utah, a Utah player onto his bench. And now he's got some words as uh, play is still in action for the next minute as Utah skates towards the left circle. Kansas City takes it away and clears it out. Watch out for Yolette as he is Kansas City's most physical player, and he will drop the gloves at the drop of a hat. Pfizer will feed it back to the far side. Three minutes left in the second period. 47 seconds left in a power play. cross ice pass is picked off. McLaughlin will skate towards the goal line, look to center it, and that pass doesn't connect. Bryson Martin in the area. Oh, I think they're going to get Martin for a penalty as he held Nick Pastajov as Pastajov was trying to get the centering pass out in front from the left side. Martin's going to get called for a penalty, I believe, as play is stopped as Loren Yolette knocked Zach Sekos into the Grizzlies bench. And that's what got the fans fired up over in Kansas City as Bryson Martin is going to get two minutes in the box. So that will do it for Utah's power play. Interference is going to be the call. It's 5-1 Utah. And it looks like somebody has used their timeout. Uh, they're actually just a timeout on the ice. 2.53 left in the second. A media timeout. Hey, that's us. We'll be back in 30 seconds. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey, presented by Rio Tinto.
Well, you'll want to stay tuned for the second intermission report presented by Siegfried and Jensen's. We got a lot to update. Utah tonight is four for five on the power play. Bryson Martin gets two minutes for interference, and so he's in the penalty box. So we'll skate four on four for a little, a little bit of time, and then Kansas City will have a power play. The Grizzlies really made Kansas City pay for the five-minute major that Josh Lamon got. They skated four on four for two minutes, and then after that, the Grizzlies had three minutes of a power play, and they scored twice. On the power play, Brandon Cutler scoring both times. He scored 15.05 into the second, and 57 seconds later, he scored again on a rebound on a shot from Andrew Nelson. Nelson's got three assists, maybe four tonight. As Kansas City wins the draw, Mavericks will skate towards the their near corner. Play starting to get physical again as Grizzlies are up by four. As Connor McDonald in his own corner gets it, and he'll skate around his net, being chased by Jeremko. As McDonald will clear it out to center, Kansas City regathers it. And now we're going to skate four on four for a minute and 35 seconds, it looks like, according to the score bug. Although I do think Kansas City at some point will get a power play, unless they got a penalty as well um, with Bryson Martin going into the box. But uh, Kansas City will back it out into their own zone as there's 120 left in a four on four situation. Now Kansas City's on a power play. Thanks for leading me astray there, score bug there on Flow Sports. As the Mavericks are on the power play, as out of the penalty box is Jordan Sambrook. Mavericks are skating from right to left. Less than two minutes left in the second period as the Mavericks cross center ice. They'll feed a right wing pass. They'll skate into the zone near the corner. Now they'll chip it around the boards as the Mavericks get hit. Pass the job in the area. Puck behind the net as Kansas City right side. Oh, they tried to chip it out in front, and the pass goes wide as it hits off the near boards. And the Grizzlies, two Mavericks collide. Puck ends up in the right side. Kansas City at the point. Pascal LeBerg will feed it up top. Um, McLaughlin will get it to the near goal line. Kansas City tries to feed it out in front. McKenna has a kick off a stick. Goes back to the left point. McLaughlin will skate towards his right. Now he's in the right point. And so get it to the, the right corner. Kansas City skates towards the circle. And now they'll feed it back up top. As McLaughlin will skate towards his left. He'll take a shot. That one gets blocked out in front. Rebound shot. Saved by Metcalf. And the Grizz will clear it out of the zone. Good penalty kill work by the Grizzlies. And good job by Garrett Metcalf, who's been solid tonight. Mavericks up ahead. As they'll skate into the left corner. It's Theo Calvis around the net. I he skates to the corner. He didn't find a passing angle out in front. As there's 45 seconds left in the second period. Grizzlies back to skating five on five as Kansas City gets knocked down. Now, big time hit in the corner. And who was that to deliver that hit? As the Mavericks over to the right side. As Utah has a player down on the right side. It looked like Nate Clarman blocked a shot. And Clarman gets up slowly. Colin Lee runs after Clarman with a towel. Well, that's the second time this period we've seen a Grizzly hold it is. His face on a towel. This time it's Nate Clarman who blocked a shot up top. And Colin Lee's going to walk off the ice with Nate Clarman with 31 seconds left in the second period. It's Utah 5 and Kansas City 1. As that one must have drawn blood as it looks like they're going to work on some ice over there. As Clarman blocked a shot from the right side and apparently has drawn blood. So he'll get looked out after by the Grizzlies trainer earlier in the second period, Zach Sekos. Got hit up top, but Sekos ended up returning to the game. I'm not even sure he missed a shift. <laughs> but you know how hockey players are. When it's your time to be on the ice, you're going to find a way to be out there. So they're working on the ice near where Nate Clarman blocked the shot. What a second period it was for the Grizzlies. Oh, well, he talked about the Grizzlies' second period success. They've outscored Kansas City 3-1 to one here in the second period. We'll go over all the scoring during the second intermission, and we'll give you some Scores from around the world of sports. And we'll also have Guy Carenza on and get his thoughts about what he saw and what was a wild second period. As Andrew Nelson already tonight has four assists. Brandon Cutler has two goals and two assists. Ben Tardif has one goal and two assists. Utah wins the drop, and they'll clear it out to center ice. We're skating five on five. Theo Calvis will throw it out to center ice as the Mavericks. Right wing, dump it in. Well, it looked like they dumped it in from Kansas City territory, but no icing. 13 seconds left in the period. Kansas City rolls it back to the left point. Calvis fires it to the left circle. Now they get it to the slot. Mavericks looking for a toe drag. Utah pokes it back to center ice. 
Good defensive work by the Grizzlies, and that will do it for 40 minutes over at Cable Dahmer Arena. And how about those Grizzlies? Two goals in the first, both of them power play tallies. Utah scored two more power play goals in the second period. Brandon Cutler has a breakout game as he's got two goals and two assists. After Utah's third goal, Dylan Kelly was pulled and Riley Morris replaced him. Morris stopped five of seven. So both teams head to their, their respective dressing rooms. Utah's got a four-goal lead. We'll recap all the scoring from the first two periods when we come back. Once again, the score, second intermission, it's the Utah Grizzlies 5 and the Kansas City Mavericks 1. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey presented by Siegfried and Jensen. <laughs> Second intermission over at Cable Dahmer Arena. Utah leads 5-1. to one. Oh, What a crazy first two periods it's been. And you talked about going into Friday's game, you know, where were the Grizzlies going to generate the offense from? You know, they scored two goals on Tuesday and uh, lost 3-2. to two. Dylan Fitz and Terran Pfizer uh, scored in the first game of this series. Last night, Utah won 4-3, to three, and they were outstanding in the second period as they scored three goals in the first 8-45 uh, last night, Utah ended up winning 4-3 to three as Cameron Wright got the overtime game winner. And really coming into the to play tonight, the thought was, you know, can the Grizzlies find a way to generate something on the power play? Coming into play tonight, the Grizzlies' power play through six games was 2-for-29. Tonight, the power play is 4-for-5. Two power play goals in the first, two in the second. If you joined us late, Ben Tardiff got Utah on the board. 14-15 into the first. Andrew Nelson and Brandon Cutler with the assists. And then four minutes and 55 seconds later, 19-10 into the first. Zach Sekos with what looked to be an identical-looking goal, a one-timer from the right circle. It was Sekos' third of the year. Tardiff and Cutler with the assists. So Brandon Cutler with two first-period power play assists. Both teams had nine shots in the first period, but the Grizz had a two to nothing lead. Kansas City got on the board as Nick Konepke, uh, K N O E P K E, scored 7 13 in. Jake, don't call me Jonas Jeremko with the assist. It was just one of those where, you know, it looked like Metcalf thought that he had covered it up, but it just kind of trickled past him uh, five hole and into the back of the net. Otherwise, Garrett's been outstanding tonight, stopping 13 of 14, but that, get, that got the Mavericks on the board. And really, while the score was uh, two to one, you know, you kind of wondered where's the momentum going to be? Can the Grizzlies, you know, get that goal to make it back uh, a two-goal game? Well, enter Johnny Walker. As Andrew Nelson was in his own zone, threw it ahead to Tardiff. Tardiff skated into the offensive zone to the left side, dropped it off for Walker, who was skating down the middle. Uh, Johnny got it, and one of the things I've been impressed with Johnny Walker is he's got a quick, accurate wrist shot. There's a reason why he's Arizona State's all-time leading goal scorer. Now, Arizona State hasn't been a hockey program Division I for all that long, but Johnny Walker scored a lot of goals at Arizona State. You know, his second year at Arizona State, the 2018-2019 season, he had 23 goals in 32 games. In the following year, in the 2019-2020 year, um, he had 20 goals. Uh, so he knows how to score goals, and he was wide open in the slot, and I don't even think Dylan Kelly saw it as Walker just fired a wrist shot with a ton of velocity. I don't even think the camera could keep track of it. Uh, it was quite the shot, and Johnny Walker got it past Dylan Kelly. And, uh, you know, we said Dylan Kelly didn't see that. Well, that was the last thing Dylan Kelly saw as he was pulled from the game after Walker scored 856, and Tardiff and Nelson picked up the assist. Kelly was replaced by Riley Morris. Kelly stopped 14 of 17 in the first 28 minutes, and... 56 seconds now while the Grizzlies led three to one 
Um, looked like Walker got hit pretty hard. 12:48 into the second. While well, it was a 3-1 game, he was near center ice, kind of between both teams' benches. He might have been at the end of his shift and coming off the ice. He got blasted by Josh Lamon and Kyle Pouncey took offense. He went after Lamon and the linesman stepped in before anybody was able to drop the gloves. Lamon got a boarding major, a five-minute boarding major. He didn't get a game misconduct to go along with it. I think that's what Ryan Kanaswich was arguing for on the Grizzlies bench, but he did get a boarding major. Kyle Pouncey got a roughing minor going after Lamon. So we had four on four for two minutes, and then after that, the Grizzlies had a three-minute power play. And the thing about the majors is even if you score a goal, it doesn't matter. You get to stay on the power play, um, whereas opposed to a normal power play, you get, you know, they get their guy out of the penalty box if you score once. So while the score was 3-1 to one, and the Grizzlies were on the power play as Lamon was serving the major, Brandon Cutler scored his first of the year. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think that was the one where he was on the left side, took a shot, bounced off of Morris, then Cutler got it back, and then he skated around the net, and you know, Morris was out of position. And it was just an easy wraparound. Cutler was able to sneak it in, and that made it a 4-1 game. And props to the Kansas City uh, production crew for showing a replay of the visiting team's goals. Some teams are so unprofessional that they don't even show the visiting team's goals. So we applaud Kansas City. We tip our hat if we were wearing one. Thanks for showing the Grizzlies' goals. So we were able to get an extra look at it. 57 seconds later, Cutler scored again. Uh, if I remember right, that was on a rebound from a Nilsson shot. Nilsson shot it from the left wing, bounced off of Morris, and Cutler was just out in front to put it away. What a job by Brandon Cutler. And you talk about having a night. You know, he was scoreless in his first four games of the season as he was signed by the Grizzlies uh, a little more than a week ago, probably about a week and a half ago, right before media day, a couple Tuesdays ago. Uh, Cutler with two goals and two assists tonight. How about Andrew Nelson? It's unbelievable what he has done as of late. Nelson came in to play tonight, one goal and four assists in six games. Tonight, Andrew Nelson has four assists. He had two for he had one first period assist, then he got an assist on in on the last on each of Utah's last three goals. You know, Walker to make it three to one, and then both of Brandon Cutler's goals. So think about the three stars for the Grizzlies tonight. Brandon Cutler, two goals and two assists. Maybe he's the number one star. Ben Tardiff, one goal and two assists. Maybe he's the second star. Andrew Nelson with four assists tonight. Could end up as the third star of the game. That's how good things have been for the Grizzlies this evening. They lead 5-1. to one. You saw a little bit of frustration from the Kansas City side late, and so we'll watch out for that a little bit in the third period as we'll skate 5-on-5 five five to start the third. How about the shot count in the second period? You know, Utah was on the power play a few times, but they outshot the Mavericks 16-5 to five in the second period. Utah has outshot Kansas City 25-14 to 14 as Utah 4-for-5 four on the power play. Kansas City 0-for-4, so it's not just the power play for Utah that's gotten the job done. It's their penalty kill that's really produced as well. So what a night it's been as the Grizzlies lead 5-1 to one in the rubber match as they're looking to win their second in a row after Kansas City won the series opener uh, by a 3-2 to two score. That's when Keegan Howdeshell got the game winner with 158 left in regulation. Speaking of Howdeshell, he's a noticeable absence from the Kansas City lineup tonight. When we come back, we'll give you some scores from around the world of sports, and we'll also talk with Guy Carenza and get his perspective on what's been a crazy first two periods as Utah leads 5-1 to one here in an offensive explosion. This is the Siegfried and Jensen Intermission Report on the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. 
You see Grizzlies 5 and the Mavericks 1. I'm Tyson Whiting. It's going to be an interesting third period as Utah trying to close out the victory. How about Garrett Metcalf against Kansas City? The last three appearances he had coming into play tonight were all against the Mavericks. He was 3-0 with a save percentage of 940, and so far tonight Garrett has stopped 13-14 of 14 to lead the Grizzlies, and he could end up winning his fourth straight game against the Mavericks. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Carenza. We'll go over some scores a little bit later on, including a World Series update with Houston and Philadelphia. As that's in the middle innings. And I think last I checked it was still scoreless uh, as uh, Houston leads that series three games to two. But, Guy, we were wondering about the offense and we are wondering about the power play. Two power play goals in the first and then two more in the second. And how about Brandon Cutler having his breakout game with two goals and two assists? I think it's safe to say... The Grizzlies offense has arrived. We were waiting for it, saying, when are they going to click? When are they going to start get going? Power play, we were talking about it. Oh, it's lower than the inflation rate. What's wrong with the power play? <laughs> well, it's here, all right? And they're going to have to call the Kansas City Fire Department down a Cable Dahmer because the Grizzlies are burning down the building. All right, power play is on fire. Brandon Cutler has arrived. Brand, uh, ben Tardif, uh, two goals, three assists uh, in his last two games. He's here. Grizzlies look great. I'll call the fire department. That's a better line than my inflation rate line that I used earlier on. But how about Garrett Metcalf again? You know, he only saw like five shots in the second period. Somehow one of them trickled past him. I know Garrett would like to have that one back, but otherwise he's been pretty good again. Yeah, Garrett's been great. And, you know, that, that goal, uh, you can't really blame that one on him either. I, at least I don't think so. There was a screen in front. Uh, Puck just finds his way past him. Uh, but the Salt Lake City native has been awesome. He's been great, and it's really awesome to see that he's come back from his injury and he's playing fantastic for the Grizzlies. And Johnny Walker certainly has made an impact. He scored a goal uh, to make it a 3-1 game. He's got that quick-looking wrist shot that gets that goaltenders in a hurry, and he just kind of handcuffed Dylan Kelly. And then he took the hit right there at center ice. They got the Grizzlies uh, a major as uh, Josh Lamb. got a, a boarding major. You know, Kyle Pouncey did get after Lamb and got a roughy minor himself, but... You think about that three minutes worth of a major power play, Utah scored twice, and before you know it, three to one turned into five to one pretty quickly, and the Grizzlies in you know well in control in this game as a result. Yeah, Tyson, you're right. And we gotta give a lot of credit to the worm, Johnny Walker, as his goal was really, I feel like, the turning point in that period because he scores the goal. Tado had says, Kelly, you're out of here. <laughs> and uh, we get Morris in the net, and then Walker takes that hit. Uh, they get the penalty, the five-minute major, but I really liked what the Grizzlies did after that hit happened. I think we're really starting to see the Grizzlies gel. They're looking a lot, the, you know, the chemistry has been really good. They're looking a lot better, and Walker takes that hit, and everybody, as you said before, Tyson found a dance partner, and they started swinging them for their teammate, which is, is awesome to see. I mean, Kanasovich has built a really good team here. Uh, got a lot, a lot, they have got a lot of chemistry, and uh, he takes that hit. They go on the power play, and what do they do? Bang, bang, Brandon Cutler. They score a few goals, and they make Kansas City pay. Can't ask for much more. Grizzlies lead 5-1. to one. We'll talk with Guy during the postgame report as Utah's up by four. Let's go over some scores from around the world of sports. It's a busy night in the league as well as top 25 college football scores. Uh, BYU has lost four in a row. Are they going to lose five in a row? Well, let's see what the score looks like now. Uh, six minutes are left in the fourth quarter. Boise State leads BYU. 28 to 24 so unless BYU comes back in that game they'll have lost five in a row BYU right now is four and five on the season Boise State is six and two bottom of the sixth inning coming up Phillies lead the Astros one nothing no it's not a Nick Castellanos home run but the Phillies were able to get on the board I'm not sure how they scored as I've been watching a hockey game tonight but it's a one nothing Phillies lead uh, Houston is one win away from winning the World Series as it's game six. Houston leads that series three games to two. Other top 25 college football action. Ooh, how about this? Early fourth quarter, 10th ranked LSU leads Alabama 14 to nine. That's an interesting score. Ooh, how about this one? The number four team in the country, Clemson. They trail to Monty's favorite team, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, 21-0. So Notre Dame's up by three touchdowns. That game just starting out the fourth quarter. Ten minutes left in the fourth. Texas leads Kansas State 34-24. to Late third quarter, the Utes ranked 14th in the country. Utah leads Arizona 31-10. to That game played at Rice-Eccles Stadium. Just starting out the third quarter, 
NC State leads Wake 17-14. Games that have gone final from earlier today, 17th-ranked North Carolina defeats Virginia 31-28. Second-ranked Ohio State defeats Northwestern 21-7. Weather played a big factor in that game. Seventh-ranked TCU goes to 9-0 on the season. They defeat Texas Tech 34-24. 19th-ranked Tulane goes to 8-1 on the season. They defeat Tulsa 27-13. The big game of the day, number one-ranked Tennessee. They they lose to Georgia 27-13. It's possible Georgia will be, will be ranked number one in the next college football playoff top 25 poll. Penn State defeats Indiana 45-14. Pitt defeats 20th-ranked Syracuse 19-9. Michigan State defeats 16th-ranked Illinois 23-15. Kansas goes to 6-3 on the season. They're bowl eligible as they defeat Oklahoma State 37-16. Oklahoma State ranked number 18th in the country. They probably aren't going to be ranked after back-to-back -back losses now. 8th-ranked Oregon defeats Colorado 49-10. 25th ranked Central Florida defeats Memphis 35 28. Later on tonight, Pac 12 after dark, 12th ranked UCLA. Defeat, uh, they uh, take on Arizona State. UCLA is 7 and 1 on the season. And 9th ranked USC is a 21 point favorite as they host Cal. Cal is 3 and 5 on the year. Some scores a lot from the ECHL. Two games involving Mountain Division opponents outside of the Grizzlies and Mavericks. Second intermission, Tulsa leads Wichita 4-1. First intermission, no score between Rapid City and Idaho. The other games in the league have all gone final. Cincinnati defeats Toledo 3-1. Worcester over Norfolk 4-2. Savannah goes to 5-1 on the season. They defeat Greenville by a 5-1 score. Reading over Wheeling 4-3. Indy over Kalamazoo, 5-1. to one. Florida is a 5-2 to two winner over Jacksonville. South Carolina defeats Atlanta, 4-2. to two. Newfoundland over Maine, 5-2. to two. And Adirondack defeats the 12 Rivieres Lions by a 6-1 to one score. Third period action will begin shortly over at Cable Dahmer Arena. Some NHL scores. The Grizzlies NHL affiliate, the Colorado Avalanche, get a victory in Finland. They defeat Columbus, 5-1. to one. Red Wings shut out the Islanders 3-0. Jets topple the Blackhawks 4-0. Stars over the Oilers 6-2. Vegas defeats Montreal 6-4. Maple Leafs over the Bruins 2-1. Lightning defeat the Sabres 5-3. Flyers go to 6-3-2 on the season. They defeat Ottawa 2-1. Arizona over Washington 3-2. Kraken defeat the Penguins 3-2. Later on tonight, Devils are at the Flames. Predators at the Canucks. Panthers at the Kings. And the Ducks are at the Sharks. Well, both teams have hit the ice. We'll have third period action. We'll take a quick look, if we can, to see the first couple shifts of the third period if Nate Clarman's out there. He took a puck to the face in the final minute of the second period, and he had to walk off with a towel on his face with Colin Lee, the Grizzlies trainer, assisting him. So we'll see if Clarman's back out there for Utah uh, for the third period. We probably won't know until he has the puck on his stick with these remote broadcasts. Grizzlies are going to be skating from right to left, as we see it on Flow Sports. Your mind's eye see it on YouTube. Kansas City will be skating from left to right. Tristan Mullen skating around. Dakota Raby is going to be on the left wing to start this period. Loren Yulette out there as well. Watch out for him physically. He's in his fifth season with the Mavericks. It's almost looks like the linesman and Yulette talking things over. You know Yulette's going to make a physical presence uh, at some point in this series as Brandon Cutler will take the face off at center ice. Cutler's already got two goals and two assists tonight. I imagine he'll be the number one star of the game. Draw one by Cutler and the Grizzlies, and we're underway here in the third. Both teams skating five on five as Grizz will dump it in. And icing is called on Utah nine seconds into the third period as they tried to throw it ahead, and the pass was incomplete. Faceoff comes back towards Garrett Metcalf. Taryn Pfizer on the ice. Pfizer came into play tonight with a point in five of his six games. 
He leads the club with five goals on the year. Off the draw, Mavericks win it. Shot saved by Metcalf. Rebound, there's a lot of bodies out in front. Utah comes out of it with the puck. Grizz will nudge it ahead as Utah will dump it in. Pfizer and Raby chase after it, but Kansas City gets there first. So they'll spin it along the wall. Utah try to get it to Victor Bartley. Kansas City picks it off. Mavericks will skate down the middle, two on two. Right wing shot and doesn't go in as Utah gets knocked into their own net. The net gets dislodged. Boy, the Mavericks had a good look because they tried to go glove side on Metcalf. It's one of those. I'm not sure what happened, but they uh, didn't score. Didn't look like Garrett made the save. It looked like they continued to play. 32 seconds into the third period. And Yolette talking it over with Morgan. Draw's going to be in the Grizzlies zone. LeBerg and Pastajov talking with Alex Norman and the referee. Metcalf's done a good job tonight, stopping 14 of 15. I think they're going to go to video replay, it looks like, because the referee's going to glide towards center ice. And they're going to go to video review. Boy, for a second there, I thought, how does Kansas City get that opportunity on the right side? And I almost need that Fox glowing puck to be able to figure out where the puck is at times. Tracking shots can be a little bit difficult on these remote broadcasts sometimes, especially since you think about a laptop screen. The screen, I, I'm actually watching the game. Maybe I'm an idiot for not going to, like, the full screen uh, monitor there so I can see things a little bit better. Uh, but, um, you know, we'll see if we get a, a replay to tell us what happened is obviously they'll be checking to see if Kansas City had scored a goal or not. And it looks like the guy's trying to get the – well, it looks like he's uh, on Internet Explorer right now. He's trying to pull up a replay. <laughs> so we got a good view of that one on Flow Sports. IT guy. We need an IT guy there at center ice to make sure that we know how to plug that thing in. Utah's outshot Kansas City 25-15. to 15. Now, we're not sure if he's watching the play on the ice or if he's watching Game 6 of the World Series. It's possible he's trying to see if Notre Dame is going to hold on to defeat Clemson. Who knows? We might have a replay that lasts 30 minutes. I don't know. But he's looking at the play right now. Kind of be nice if we were able to see a replay of what happened. As there's 19:28 left in the third period, Utah's up 5-1. to one. Referee has seen what he needed to see as he hands the tablet back to the IT guy. Now he comes out of the penalty box. He's going to tell the crowd on Flow Sports what it is. No goal on the play. Wouldn't doubt it. We never saw a replay, so for all we know, really good call by Alex Normandon. <laughs> Draws in the left circle. We're having some fun here on a Saturday night. Hey, if we're not going to laugh, we'll probably end up crying. But it's been a good night for the Grizzlies here in the rubber match of this three-game set. His passage job will take the face off against Cutler. Cutler gets knocked down on the draw as he uh, gets hit on the can. He uh, it looked like passage off can the face off guy there. Over to the right side, passage off to the right, surrounded by four Grizzlies. He'll take a shot that goes wide, and the puck rolls along the far wing boards. Kansas City will race after it. And as 50 seconds into the third period, they'll have the puck behind Riley Morris, who replaced Dylan Kelly, who played the first 29 minutes of play. As LeBerg crosses center ice, he'll dump it in. Bounces off the boards. Nate Clerman is back out there. He gets the puck. As he'll toss it off the stick of somebody. Now it's to the high slot. Maverick shot saved by Metcalf. Rebound McKenna hacking away. Metcalf looks like he's covered up. And Nate Clerman gets on McKenna. As McKenna just one whack after another trying to break it free of Metcalf. But Garrett looks like he's held on. 18.50s left in the third. It's still a four-goal Grizzlies lead. As a couple of those goals here in this series have come from the high slot there, fired into you know firing it into traffic in front of the net. Garrett will skate towards the corner, now back to his net. Good job by the Grizzlies and good shift by Nate Clarman. You know, we had to check to make sure he was back out there after taking up what we what we think was a puck to the face. And he got patched up during the intermission and he's back out there. Draw's gonna be in the left circle. Secos will take it against. Jake Jeremko. Jeremko picked up an assist in the goal that Kansas City scored. Nate Kanopke, a 7-13 into the second period. That's Kansas City's lone goal tonight. Draw one by Utah as Bryson Martin skates around his net. He'll feed it to Tardif. Ben will bounce it into the Mavericks zone. Cameron Wright will dump it in deep from just inside the blue line. Puck rolls around the boards as Jeremko will feed it to a defenseman. Sekos tries to cut in front of him. Now it goes to Tardif. Back to Sekos. I tries to feed it out in front to Wright. Passes wide of the mark. Wright nudges to the right point. McDonald with a shot. Saved by Morris. 
as Connor looking for his first goal of the season. Morris made the glove save, and Sekos got knocked down as he was trying to redirect it. I think he got knocked down by Jordan Sambrook. 18-25 left in the third as both teams make a line change as Riley Morris adjusts his gloves. Morris not a very big goaltender, 5'10 and 207 pounds. He's born in Calgary, Alberta, over in Canada. Wonder if he's a Flames fan or an Oilers fan. It seems like you're one or the other over there. Probably since he was born in Calgary, he's probably more of a Flames guy. Draw one by Penner and the Grizzlies. As he'll throw it to the high slot, lefty shot, that gets blocked and goes to Josh Lambin. Lambin got the boarding major in the second period that led to two Utah goals. As Mavericks still in their own zone. Two minutes into the third, Calvis will feed it to the far side. Now cross-ice pass. Kansas City gets to Kolkowski. He'll dump it in as it bounced off the stick of number 13, Josh Lamon. Now behind the net. Nilsson, who's got four assists tonight, skates towards the corner. He'll get it to Walker. He'll throw it ahead to Fitz. Fitz at center ice will skate towards his left. Fitz, I tried to center it, kicked off a skate of Theo Calvis. And Penner tried to get it over to Walker as the Mavericks have the puck. Koski skates down the middle. He crosses center ice. Now veer off to the left as he steps over the line. Tries to get around Pouncey. Backhand shot saved by Metcalf. And Garrett will just casually glove it and hold on. 17-35 left in the third period. As Utah still leads 5-1. to one. For the first time tonight, my screen froze here on, on Flow Sports. As there was some action after the whistle, but none to be had as... Garrett Klee talking things over with the linesman, Tyler Penner, in the area. And hopefully it's just the only time tonight that the screen freezes, knock on wood. We had that the first two minutes of last night's game, which was certainly interesting. As Klee will skate towards the bench. As I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Carenza. We'll talk with Guy during the postgame report. Loren Yulette kicked out of the faceoff circle. Zach Sekos will take the draw. Oh, boy, I spoke too soon. We got, it. We got another freeze. <laughs> As Utah's up by four. Now I got the thing. Uh, we need that IT guy that was at center ice. They're working on the tablet. As now as now it looks like, um, you know, we've had our Internet go down. As we missed about three seconds of live action, 17-32 is left here in the third period. Utah's up five to one. As the draw to the left side, Grizzlies nudge it to the corner as the puck is in Utah's uh, as Nelson hits Kansas City, now big hit behind the net as the Grizz get the puck as they'll skate from right to left. Utah will tap it out to center ice. It goes into the Mavericks zone. Taken by Theo Calvis as he'll feed it to center ice. Utah picks it off left wing. They'll enter the zone. Sekos has got a goal tonight. We'll kick it over to the slot as Cameron Wright couldn't handle it as the puck was at his ankles. He gets knocked down. Kansas City crosses center ice. Now the Mavericks will skate towards the right circle. Now Kansas City, low liner, shot saved by Metcalf. That was taken by Luke Morgan, the first-year pro. He played last season at the University of Michigan. Metcalf makes the glove save. McDonald and Martin protecting their goaltender as Loren Yulette was in front of the net. Ah, Utah's going to get a penalty. Looks like Sekos was protecting his net a little bit too firmly. Two minutes for tripping Zach Sekos is in the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Have you or someone you know been charged with the DUI? Rogers and Russell is Utah's DUI defense firm. Don't throw away or disregard any letter that you get from Rogers and Russell inviting you to schedule a free consultation. Call and get Utah's best DUI defense team. Rogers and Russell. Kansas City on the power play. They trail 5-1. to one. Mavericks in the right corner have it, and they'll toss it to the point as McLaughlin. We'll feed it across. Now left side, shot and a score as Kansas City connects on a one-timer. And that was a blast from the left circle as Jeremy McKenna gets the goal, which is his fourth of the year. It's a power play goal for the Mavericks. And with 16.43 left in the third, it's the Grizzlies five and the Mavericks two. McLaughlin should get an assist, and I think Pascal LeBurge should as well. As LeBurge was on the right side, fed it across to... McKenna, and McKenna fired away, and that one had a ton of steam on it. Looks like Jeremy McKenna's a pretty good goal scorer. He can end up scoring, you know, 20 to 30 goals this year if he plays the whole season. 16-40 left in the third and counting. It's 5-2 Utah. As Kansas City has scored one here in the third. As, U as Kansas City back in their own zone with the puck. 
as they'll spread the ice. Three and a half minutes into the third period, Kansas City along the near side, get it out to center ice. Right wing, Mavericks dump it in. All right, Bartley hit Kansas City up high, but luckily the referee didn't spot it. As Bartley will skate around his net as he gets the puck, as he'll lift it into the air. Gloved by Feisner, the Kansas City bench, he dumps it in. As out of his net is Riley Moore, so he'll feed it towards the right wing boards. Pfizer collides with Tristan Mullen as Mullen holds up Pfizer, and Kansas City comes out of it with the puck. McLaughlin will chip it out to center ice. As the Mavericks, Luke Morton will stop near the boards. Jeremko gets pushed along the right point. Tardif will feed it over towards his own corner to Nelson, and Andrew will lift it into the air. It goes into the Kansas City zone, but did a good job of not lifting it too far to where it got an icing call. Clorman back in his own zone. We'll get it across to Nielsen. Andrew will get it back to Clorman. He's in the left corner as Nate will feed it high into the air. Bouncing puck at center ice is crowded by Kansas City. As the Mavericks out to center ice, try to dump it in. Utah picks it off. Now the Mavericks will skate into the zone. They look to center. It goes wide of McKenna. Lamon's over there as well. He'll feed it to the left point. Uh, Tommy Muck couldn't keep it in. He gets it taken away. Grizzly skate down the middle to take a shot. Saved by Morris. That was taken by Cameron Wright. He'll feed it to the left side. Kansas City will take it away. Cole Koski enters the zone. He'll feed a right wing pass. And now across the left, Kansas City looking to center. Now wrap around. Metcalf makes a save on Nick, Nate Kanopke. Kanopke was skating around the net. Metcalf had fallen down. And Garrett did a good job of making sure that the wraparound didn't connect as Kanepke just kind of fired it into Metcalf's pads. And Garrett made the save on his backside with 14.56 left in the third. Draw's going to be in the right circle. It's 5-2 Utah. On the Kansas City goal, Jeremy McKenna scored at 3.17. And Pascal LeBurge and Jake McLaughlin with the assists. Tyler Penner will take the draw for Utah against Luke Morgan. And Morgan, the Michigan native, loses the faceoff as Penner, who's from the Manitoba area, wins it. Victor Bartley will feed it off the screen. It's picked off at center ice. Now Utah gets it back. Fitz will skate towards the right side. He'll take a shot. Saved by Morris. It goes, stays in play, rolls along the near boards. Taken by Bartley. He'll feed it across to Martin. Back to Bartley. Victor with a left wing pass at center ice. Did Utah get a piece of it as it goes deep into the Kansas City zone? It did hit it off of Johnny Walker and stays in play. As the Grizzlies around the net, oh, they try to feed it to Walker out in front. Fitz hit the side of the net. Now Fitz in the left circle takes a shot saved by Morris. Rebound goes to Kansas City. And the Mavericks will clear it out to center ice. Bouncing puck. Grizzlies have it in their own zone as Nate Clermont will toss it to his own corner. Nate gets the head to Johnny Walker. Walker gets blasted by Loren Yolette. Now the Mavericks back in their own zone. Six minutes into the third period, 5-2 Utah. As McKenna will skate in as he gets hit, stops at the point, and he'll feed it across. Bounced off a of Grizzly, goes towards the Mavericks bench. Kansas City back in their own zone gets it as they'll skate to their far goal line, and now they try to clear it out, but Utah kept it in the point. Utah gets over to Clorman, who literally kicked it towards the slot. Now Kansas City up ahead. Breakaway. LeBerg with a backhand shot, and he scores. Like Pascal LeBerg scored as, boy, it looked like Clorman tried to kick it towards the slot. Kansas City found LeBerg behind Clorman. The pass connected from blue line to blue line. LeBerg had a breakaway and made a nice backhand attempt that went past Garrett Metcalf. 13-38 is left in the third. It's the Grizzlies 5 and the Mavericks 3. As Clermont kicked it towards the slot, Kansas City nudged it ahead. Pass from blue line to blue line to LeBerg, who was behind Clermont. Nate was chasing after him, but it was a nice move by Pascal LeBerge. As Kansas City scored two third-period goals on Tuesday night. They scored two third-period goals last night. And so far in the first six and a half minutes of the third period, they have two goals here. Kansas City in the third period of this series has outscored the Grizzlies 6 to nothing, And Ryan Kanasiewicz is calling a timeout, and he's getting on his guys right now. As he was upset about that one as Kansas City had LeBerg get behind the Grizzlies' defense. Passage off and McKenna with the assist. 13-38 left in the third as Kansas City wants to make this one an interesting game as Grizzlies hockey this season brought to you by Rio Tinto 
At Rio Tinto, as pioneers in mining and metals, they have produced materials essential for human progress. Grizzlies Hockey also brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen, personal injury attorneys. Siegfried and Jensen's been around for a long time, and great to have them partner up with the Grizzlies this season. Utah Grizzlies Hockey also brought to you by Operation Lifesaver Utah, Sea Tracks Think Train, and by Coca-Cola, where real magic is only a sip away. Bottom of the sixth inning, Astros lead the Phillies 3-1. to one. As the Houston fans look like they're all fired up, if Houston wins tonight, they are the world champs for the 2022 season. 13.05 and counting left in the third period. As they're back to live action. Metcalf will throw it towards the far side for McDonald's as the Grizzlies have it in their own zone. Utah leads 5-3. to three. Kansas City has scored two unanswered here in the third. Bartley will feed it to the near side for Secos. Zach will carry it out to center ice and dump it into the right corner as it hits off the boards on one hop of the, of the ice. Kansas City with Cole Koski played for Worcester last season. He'll nudge it ahead. Lambin will feed it to the left side as Kansas City will get it towards Garrett Clee. Fires a shot saved by Metcalf. Rebound rolls back towards Garrett, and Garrett's able to cover up. Garrett took the shot, and Garrett made the save as Garrett Clee playing his first game of this series. 12-31 left in the third. And there's a timeout. We'll take one as well. It's the Grizzlies 5 and the Mavericks 3. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey presented by Rio Tinto. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. 12.31 left in the third period. Guy brought us back to the air, and he said, let's ride. Go Broncos. <laughs> Russell Wilson's had himself a really tough year. As Let's check the local college football scores. BYU gets a victory. They scored a late touchdown. They defeat Boise State 31-28 to as their four-game losing streak comes to an end. BYU goes to 5-5 five and five on the season. How are the Utes doing? Well, early fourth quarter, 11 minutes left. They lead Arizona 31-10. to We'll check later on to see how Utah State did as the Aggies uh, got a victory 27-10 to over New Mexico. So Utah State gets a victory. They lost their athletic director, and they're looking for a new AD as we speak. As the Grizz win the face out, they'll throw it out to neutralize. So Utah leads Kansas City 5-3. to three. Now the Grizz back in their own zone. Feed it to Tardiff. So he's had a good game. He'll get it to right around center ice. Cameron was last night's hero. He'll get it over to Bryson Martin. He'll feed it to the far side for Nate Clorman. Nate, rink-wide pass is picked off as Sandbrook will skate into the offensive zone, try to drop it off for Lambin. Now Sandbrook shoots, and that one goes wide. Lambin behind the net will feed it to Pascal LeBurge, who's got one goal and one assist, both of them coming in the third period. It's Kansas City battling in the left point. Grizzlies holding strong near the wall, as Utah will get the puck, and they'll carry it out to neutral ice. Grizz will dump it in. Is it going to be icing, though? They did it from their own territory. Kansas City glides over there, and no icing as Kansas City with the puck. 11.36 and counting left in the third as the Mavericks will feed it across ice and it glanced off the stick so no icing as Metcalf behind his net will get it to Fitz on the near side. Dylan will bounce it off the near glass. It's taken by Johnny Walker as he gets dragged down and the referee is just spotting it and will continue to skate five on five as Walker battling behind the net taken by Theo Calvis. Calvis will nudge it ahead. Fitz picks it off right side. He'll take a shot that goes wide. Walker behind the net. And he'll feed it to the corner as Utah gets it to the point. Nielsen with plenty of room. Skates towards his right. He'll take a shot. And that gets blocked out in front. Slot shot goes wide. I think that was Walker on it. Now Fitz will get it back to Nielsen. Nielsen will bounce it off the backboards as Penner has a roll back to the right corner. Kansas City was in the right position. They couldn't clear it out. Utah races towards the near boards. And Calvis was able to poke it away from Pfizer. Kansas City behind their net will three, feed it over to the far side. Now to center ice as Pascal LeBerg overskated it. And the Grizz come back with it in their own zone, skating from right to left. 10-25 left in the third. It's 5-3 Utah. 
as Jamison gets hit. Right circle, Kansas City gets a poked away. Brandon Cutler was in the right place at the right time. He's got two goals and two assists tonight. And he'll feed it to the right side. Grizzlies cross center. Utah will lift it. It bounces off the boards on one hop. As the Grizzlies get over there, Dakota Raby, but it's Kansas City with the puck first. Over to the right point, Utah races to keep it in. Martin fires a shot that gets blocked. Now Utah will feed it to the left corner from the right point. Kansas City gets it as Tommy Muck will feed a right wing pass, neutralize. That doesn't hit anybody and goes all the way down for an icing call. 9.53 left in the third period. Not to leave Weber State fans out. Weber State lost to Sac Sacramento State 33-30. I didn't know Sacramento State was that good this year. They're now 9-0 on the season. Weber State falls to 7-2. and So it looks like a good day for the FBS Division I teams um, in Utah, but Weber State loses by three. As BYU, Utah, and Utah State look like they're all going to win. As off the left wing draw, that one goes wide. Now right side. Grizzlies in the corner get pinned. As there's less than 10 minutes left in the third period, Utah's up by two. Kansas City will skate around to the near corner as the Mavericks trying to clear their zone as Kansas City will skate around their goal line and back over to the far side. Mavericks will backhand it out to neutral ice. Grizz will feed it to the center ice, tapped off of Secos' stick in Mavericks territory. He dumps it in deep right behind the net. Kansas City will feed it towards the far side. As the Mavericks will lift it out to center ice. It's gloved by Nielsen. He'll nudge it ahead, but it goes to a Maverick. Kansas City tries to get around Nielsen. Now they enter the zone and dump it in from their offensive blue line all the way to the backboards. Utah will get it back towards center ice. It goes past Kansas City. No icing, so Utah can make a line change. Less than nine minutes are left here in the third period. Utah's up by two. Kansas City. We'll toss it to center ice. Now it's deep into the Grizzlies zone. Metcalf behind his net. Feeds it to the right side. He gets stuck towards the corner. Dylan Fitz will chip it across. Now Utah will carry it out of the zone and out to center ice. Right wing Utah dumps it in. As Morris behind his net will feed it back towards the far side. Fitz in the area as it gets kicked behind the net. Penner over to Fitz. Right wing shot. That one goes wide. Morris might have gotten a piece of it. As Bartley gets it across to McDonald. McDonald around the boards. Back towards the end wall. Now the Grizzlies behind the net as Fitz gets it up top for Bartley. Bartley over to McDonald. McDonald gets to Fitz as Dillon will bounce it off the right corner. Penner skates over there, but Kansas City gets there first. Mavericks will spread the ice as Utah on a good offensive shift comes off. Eight minutes are left in the third, and time can't run fast enough from the Grizzlies' perspective as they are nursing a two-goal lead, 5-3. to three. Utah's taking 30 shots, Kansas City 25. Mavericks still in their own zone. Pass to neutral ice is picked off by Cutler. Now the Mavericks get it back at center ice. His pass the job will kick it towards Metcalf. Garrett kicks it back to the far corner. Cutler battling with two Mavericks. Pfizer over there. Nelson as Cutler nudges it across. Raby will lift it into the air. It's gloved by Kansas City at center ice. And McLaughlin gets it taken away. Pfizer on two knees gets to Cutler as, Cut as now Pfizer gets back to his feet. Cutler around the net. I'll try to center it to Pfizer. It kicked off his stick. Kansas City will skate out to neutralize towards the Grizzlies bench. Secos cuts in front of the Mavericks, and he'll clear it back to center ice. Utah crosses center, and they lift it high into the air as it bounces in the near corner. Kansas City runs down in their own zone to get it. Mavericks get it back to center ice. Seven minutes are left in the third. Kansas City dumps it in as McDonald feeds it across towards Tardif. Back to McDonald. Connor gets hit in the corner. And so get it to Secos. Action still in the Grizzly zone. Now Utah gets it out to center. Right wing. Grizz dump it in. Racing after it's Tardif. He gets to the right corner. He feeds the circle, but nobody was there except for a Maverick. Kansas City gets it out to center ice. Utah gets it back and dumps it in. A Grizzly is down in the right corner, but they get back to their feet. And we get a whistle, and it looks like it's a delayed offside on Kansas City. 6.34 is left in the third. Grizzlies 5 and the Mavericks 3. Loren Yulette will skate towards his bench, Theo Calvis as well, and we got a timeout. It's the Grizzlies 5 and the Mavericks 3. You're listening to Utah Grizzlies Hockey, presented by Rio Tinto.
Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. It's the Grizzlies 5 and the Mavericks 3. 6.34 left in the third. We'll see if the Grizz can find a way to hold on to this lead, but Kansas City has dominated the third period in this series. They have outscored the Grizzlies 6 to nothing in the third. The Grizzlies have really dominated the second period in this series as, what's the margin? I think 7-1 to one in Utah's favor in the second period. It's a rubber match. Kansas City won on Tuesday night. Utah won last night 4-3 to three in overtime. Whoever wins this game wins the three-game series, and right now the Grizzlies have a two-goal lead. Zach Sekos has been instrumental for the Grizzlies. Uh, away from the puck, you know he doesn't have a goal. He has one goal tonight as he scored late in the first period. He's got three goals on the season. He was a plus three coming into play tonight, and he's been outstanding. He wins another faceoff for the Grizz as puck is in the near side. Grizz will kill, kill skated out to center ice. Now Kansas City gets a poked away. Utah out to center ice to the right side, and did Utah touch it? No, they didn't. Icing is on the Grizzlies. Six twenty left in the third. Action comes back towards Garrett Metcalf who has stopped 22 of 25. Draws going to be in the left circle. Utah in the black jerseys with white numbers, white lettering, white on the elbows, and a little bit of professional green mixed in. Horizontal sleeves on the forearms uh, that are professional green as the draw won by Utah, and they clear it out to center. Mavericks get it back as they skate from left to right as we see it on Flow Sports. Over towards the slot, lefty shot, that goes wide. Mavericks try to feed it out in front. Grizzlies kick it back towards the left corner as Utah will get it out to center ice. Grizz over skate the puck. Mavericks get it back. Less than six minutes are left in the third period. Utah's up by two as Kansas City Sambrook will feed it out to the Kansas City offensive line. McKenna dumps it in. McKenna scored a third period goal on the power play. As Kansas City will get it to the left point. Now the Mavericks out the backboard. They feed it to the left circle, but the only guy there was a Grizzly. Utah will dump it down from blue line to blue line. Mavericks run it down. It's Kansas City skating from left to right. Skate around their goaltender, Riley Morris, who replaced Dylan Kelly about halfway through. Mavericks to the left side, skate towards the corner. As Utah battling, McDonald trying to take the puck away. Now a takedown as Kansas City drags down a Grizzly. And that's Johnny Walker. And from the slot shot saved by Metcalf. He holds on to Johnny Walker. And it looks like Walker's now, well, it looked like maybe they're going to drop the gloves. As Kansas City got held up by Walker. And it looks like somebody really wants to get a piece of Johnny. Let's see who it is. It's Tristan Mullen. Mullen thinks he got held up in the corner, and he did by Walker. Looked like a takedown by Mullen as Walker continued to hold Mullen by the arm. And then after the whistle, it, just, it was kind of a, just a continuation of the battle they, were, they, were, they had in the corner. Is Mullen going to get a penalty? He kind of shakes his head back and forth as it looks like he's going to the Rodgers and Russell legal solutions holding cell. Is Johnny Walker going with them or is it going to be a Grizzlies power play? Alex Normandon goes to the scores table, talks it over. 5-14s left in the third. Could end up being offsetting penalties. And it looks like it will be four on four. Walker will be in the box for the Grizzlies and Tristan Mullen for Kansas City. So we'll skate four on four. That will open up the ice a little bit for both teams as Utah is holding on to a two-goal lead. We'll keep an eye over the next couple minutes to see if Riley Morris comes off the ice for an extra skater. Let's get Guy Karenz in here and talk about this third period. Utah had a 5-1 to one lead, but I don't know what it is about the third periods, but Kansas City has had Utah's number. Now the Grizzlies are just trying to hold on to this two-goal lead. Yeah, the Grizzlies have really struggled in the third period. I think that they struggled in the first period coming to this game too, and they seem to overcome their woes with that. Uh, so let's see if they can come back and have a strong third period had to go along with their strong second period. It's 5-3 Grizzlies. We'll talk with Guy during the postgame report. World Series update. Astros lead 4-1. to one. That game in the top of the seventh inning. If the Astros win tonight, they're the World Series champions. 
Draws to the left circle. Brandon Cutler will take the face off against Nick, uh, against Jake Jeremko. Draw one, slot shot saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to Cutler. We didn't see who took the shot. Cutler clears it out to center. Kansas City has it back as McLaughlin will bounce it off the boards. Hugo Wap gets it taken away by Pfizer. Terran has it at his blue line, and he'll back it out towards Metcalf. As he'll give it to Clarman, who's got an A on his sweater. He'll feed it across to Bartley. Victor will nudge it ahead. It hits off the stick of Cutler. Now Kansas City at neutral ice will back it out into their own zone. I can't tell with this close-up. We are skating four-on-four as the graphic pops up. Four-on-four for the next minute, 22. 4.34 and counting left in the third. It's the Grizzlies five and the Mavericks three. Kansas City will feed it to the far side. They skate from left to right as we see it on Flow Sports. Mavericks cross center ice. McLaughlin will back it out into his own zone. Now he stays at neutral ice and feeds it to the left side. Mavericks skate into the corner. Clerman delivers a hit, and the Grizz are able to skate it out to center ice, and they'll dump it in as Tristan Mullins in the Kansas City penalty box, and Johnny Walker is in there for Utah. Mavericks. Skate across center ice. They skate down the middle. Now they'll step over the offensive line and veer off to the right point. McKenna feeds it to the right circle. Mavericks with a shot saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes towards the goal line. Sekos tries to clear it out, and it goes to center ice. Grizzlies chasing after it. Cameron Wright skates to the right circle, drops it off for Seko. Skates in. He shoots. He scores! And his baby's in the refrigerator as Zach Sekos skated down the middle. He got a pass from Cameron Wright. And he went down low past Riley Morris. That's Sekos' second of the game. And Cameron Wright's going to get an assist there as Utah's taking a 6-3 to three lead. Right to the right side, dropped it off a behind-the-back pass for Sekos. Sekos ended up going low on Riley Morris. He probably could have scored going up high on him, but he went low on him. It's a four-on-four -four goal as Sekos finds the back of the net for the second time tonight and fourth time this season. Give Cameron Wright an assist. I got to check to see if that's his first assist or second of the night. If it's his first of the night, that gives him five on the season. It's his second assist tonight and sixth of the season. As Cameron Wright for the second straight game has two assists. It's six to three. We continue to skate four on four for the next 13 seconds. Action is in the Grizzly zone in the near side. As Kansas City feeds it to the high slot. Mavericks will bounce it off the end wall. Now behind the net, Kansas City feeds it towards the left side as McLaughlin will get it over to the point. Mavericks with a righty shot. That one gets blocked. Walker's out of the box, and so is Tristan Mullen. 3.05 left in the third. It's 6-3 Utah. Zach Sekos with two goals. Brandon Cutler, two goals and two assists. And Johnny Walker and Ben Tardiff have added a goal. As the Mavericks back deep in their own zone, Theo Calvis will nudge it ahead. Cameron Wright, two assists, and Andrew Nelson with four assists. As Kansas City gets to the offensive blue line and dumps it in as Grizz. Get it over to Dakota Raby. He's at new try, so feed it across. Utah will bounce it out the boards. It goes to the near corner of the Kansas City zone. Mavericks will spin it back around to the right side as the Mavericks. Back behind their own goaltender. Over turnover. Right circle shot saved by Morris. Now Clorman will skate towards his right. Nate will fire towards the net. Saved by Morris. And the whistle blows. Out in front of the net trying to redirect it uh, was looked like Cam Strong. 2.22 is left in the third. Utah's up 6-3. to three. Looks like the Gri uh, Mavericks are going to get a penalty. As uh, maybe charging is the call. Um, Kansas City's in the box. Uh, that's just about all she wrote. If Utah's going to get a power play here with 2.22 left. As Loren Yolette is in the box. Walker and Mullen got unsportsmanlike conduct minors, 1446 into the third. That's why both of them were in the box. Yulette got a charging minor, uh, 1738 in. Utah's on the power play. They lead 6-3. to three. And a serving pass. Shot and a score! That's Johnny Walker, second of the game, as Cameron Wright gets his third assist. Wright was over on the left side in the corner, centered it to Walker out in front, and Johnny put it away. The Grizzlies kick the extra point as they have taken a 7-3 lead. And how about Johnny Walker's night? He scores two goals. Cameron Wright ends up with three assists. Wright to Walker to the back of the net. Boy, what a night for Johnny Walker. He puts both arms in the air, celebrating the goal. Johnny high-fives Cameron Wright and gives him a pat on the back. 
I will recap all the scoring, but what an offensive performance by the Grizzlies tonight. They lead 7-3. to three. And that is Utah's fifth power play goal of the night. As Utah from center ice dumps it on to Riley Morris. Morris will hold on to it. 201 is left in the third. That's right. Five power play goals for the Grizzlies. In the first six games of the regular season, Utah had two power play goals. The Grizz are five for six on the power play. Cameron Wright got an assist, but guess who also got an assist on the Walker goal, 1747 in. Andrew Nelson, who picked up his fifth assist of the night. As the Grizz over to the left side, Kansas City wins the face off. They'll throw it out to center. Grizzlies will dump it back in onto Riley Morris, who has allowed four goals here in the final half of the game. Grizz in the right corner, less than two minutes left. Skates it up top. And now to the high slot. Pounds you with a shot that gets blocked as it kicks over towards the near corner. Utah's going to win two out of three games this series. Grizz throw it towards the slot, and Kansas City picks it off. Mavericks cross center ice. will feed it over to the left. Kansas City over towards the left corner. They'll take a shot saved by Metcalf, and Garrett holds on. Garrett will be 4-0 against Kansas City in his last four starts. He has stopped 26 of 29 tonight. You think about the great offensive performances by the Grizzlies, how are you going to pick three stars if you're somebody over in Kansas City that's got to make those decisions? Johnny Walker and Zach Sekos have two goals. Brandon Cutler has two goals and two assists. Ben Tardif, one goal and two assists. Andrew Nelson with five assists. As the puck goes into the left corner, 115 left in regulation. The Grizzlies are up 7-3. to three. They've scored five power play goals. As Grizzlies carry it out to center ice, and they'll dump it in. One minute left in regulation as the Mavericks throw it back to center ice. Kansas City as a three-on-three. Now three-on-four as Kansas City enters the zone. Left wing shot kicked away by Metcalf. Now the puck to the right point. Kansas City with a shot saved by Metcalf in the butterfly position as it goes to the left corner. Mavericks around the net gets hit by Connor McDonald. And the puck ends up rolling towards Metcalf, and Garrett covers up. Good job by Dakota Raby and Can't Connor McDonald out in front, as well as Tyler Penner's played a good game. Metcalf holds on, 42.4 seconds left. He has now stopped 27 of 30. Grizzlies will be on the road. They'll continue the road trip in Allen, Texas, November 9th, 11th, and 12th. That's next Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Grizzlies, after this victory, will be 3-2 and two on the current road trip. And their, their record will go to 4-3 and three on the season. As the draw in the corner, uh, won by Utah, as they'll feed it to the right side. Half a minute to go here in the third, as the Grizzlies are up by four. As the puck bounces off a Cutler stick, he's had a breakthrough game. Kansas City's Hugo Wall will skate towards the right circle, take a shot saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to the left point. Grizzlies clear it out. Utah races towards the right circle, tries to drop it off. Nobody was home. Kansas City out to center ice, taken away by Jamison. Utah back in their own zone. Looks like they're just going to hang out there the rest of regulation. Now Utah chips it out to center ice. Seven seconds left. Kansas City back in their own zone gets it in front of uh, their goaltender. Skate, they skate around their net, and that will do it. Grizzlies win. Grizzlies win 7-3, to three, and there is no doubt about it as they got an unbelievable performance by Andrew Nelson, who had five assists tonight. How about the Grizzlies' power play? They went five for six on the man advantage. Brandon Cutler had two goals and two assists. Ben Tardif had one goal and two assists. And Johnny Walker and Zach Sekos each scored two goals. Utah outshot Kansas City by a margin of... 34 to 31. Utah had 16 shots in the second period and scored three goals. But how about this? Utah with two in the first, three in the second, and two in the third as they come away with a resounding victory as they scored 11 goals in the last two games of this series. And they have won two of the three games in Kansas City. And they will head to Allen for next week. A three game in four day test against Chad Costello's Allen Americans. What a victory indeed for the Grizzlies, an offensive breakthrough, 11 goals in the last two games, and they come away happy as they head to the locker room with a 7-3 to victory. Post-game show is coming up next. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. <laughs>
It's a happy night for the Utah Grizzlies. They get two big standings points with a 7-3 to three victory over the Kansas City Mavericks. Hi, everybody. I'm Tyson Whiting. The Grizz got off to a fast start as they took a 1-0 lead 14-15 into the contest with Ben Tardiff scoring on a one-timer from the right circle. Andrew Nelson and Brandon Cutler with the assist. Less than five minutes later, the Grizzlies got another power play and Zach Sekos reenacted Ben Tardiff's goal as he scored a one-timer from the right circle. Tardiff and Cutler with the assist there. Utah led 2 to nothing after one period with both teams taking nine shots. Kansas City got on the board. Nick Konepke with his second of the year as he went 5 full on Garrett Metcalf. Jeremko and Hugo Waugh with the assist there. And Utah took a 2-1 lead. Uh, Kansas City scored first in the second period. Johnny Walker got his first of the season, 8.56 into the second as Nilsson was in his own zone. Threw it ahead to Tardiff. Ben skated towards the left circle, dropped it off for Walker on the slot, and Johnny with a quick-looking wrist shot that had so much velocity on it that Dylan Kelly didn't see what hit him. Uh, Walker with his first of the season, Tardiff and Nilsson with the assist, and at that point, Dylan Kelly, who started a net for Kansas City, got pulled. Kelly stopped 14 of 17. He was replaced by Riley Morris. Morris stopped 13 of 17. While the score was 3-1, to one, the Grizzlies got a major power play. Josh Lamon got a boarding major, 1246 in, uh, 12.48 in. Kyle Pouncey got a roughing minor, so he skated 4-on-4 uh, four four for two minutes. And then after that, the Grizzlies got a three-minute power play. And remember, since it is a major, Utah can stay on the power play for as long as, you know, for that entire three-minute stretch, no matter how many goals they scored. But Utah scored twice. On the major power play, Brandon Cutler made it a 4-1 game as he skated around the net on a wraparound and found himself pretty much an empty net. Got it past Morris, and Cutler scored 15.05 in. Nielsen and Wright with the assist. That was a power play goal. And then 57 seconds later, 16.02 in, Cutler scored again as he got a rebound from an Andrew Nielsen shot. Cutler put it away. Pfizer and Nielsen with the assist. Utah led 5-1 to one after two periods. You have to hand it to Kansas City, though. They played pretty tough in the third period all series. You know, Utah outscored Kansas City 7-1 to one in the second periods of this series, but Kansas City outscored Utah 6-2 to two in the third periods in this series. Both teams scored two goals in the third. Kansas City scored the first two as Jake McLaughlin, or make that um, Jeremy McKenna. McKenna fired away on a one-timer from the left circle as LaBurge was on the right circle, fired it across to McKenna. McKenna with a one-timer. He got it past Metcalf. It's McKenna's fourth of the season. LaBurge and McLaughlin with the assist. And then three minutes later, Kansas City scored again. It was Pascal LaBurge, fourth of the year, passed to Javin McKenna with the assist. And so for Jeremy McKenna, he had one goal and one assist. Pascal LaBurge, with one goal and one assist himself. At that point, you know, the Grizzlies had to sweat a little bit because Utah had a 5-3 lead after two unanswered Kansas City goals. But the Grizz were able to secure the victory as Cameron Wright was in his own zone and skated out to neutralize, got the puck, skated towards the right side, threw a behind-the-back pass towards the slot for Sekos. Zach gathered it and went 5 full on Morris. Almost looked like Morris thought he was going to go high, and Seco snuck it in low, and that baby was pr pretty much put in the refrigerator at that point when Seco scored 16-19 in. And, you know, the Grizzlies ended up getting back on the power play as Loren Yolette got a charging minor. And nine seconds into the power play, Wright got the puck in the left corner. I think Nelson threw a pass to Wright. And then Wright was in the left side, just outside the corner, Centered it to Walker, who was out in front of the net, and Johnny uh, was able to easily tap it into the back of his net. It was Walker's second goal of the game. Cameron Wright picked up his third assist. And for Andrew Nelson, he also picked up an assist. That means Nelson ended the night with five assists. Cameron Wright had three assists. Ben Tardiff had one goal and two assists. Brandon Cutler had two goals and two assists. And, you know, Johnny Walker and Zach Sekos each had two goals. I mean, that's really the kind of game it was for the Grizzlies offensively. 
and you know they win five. They win seven to three. They've scored eleven goals in their last two games, and they win two out of three games in Kansas City. You know the Mavericks do look like they're an improved team, but the Grizzlies were able to find something offensively. And how about the story of the power play? In the first six games of the regular season, Utah was two for twenty-nine on the power play. Tonight, the Grizzlies were five for six. So they now have seven power play goals, and that power play ranking goes up quite a bit as now Utah is seven for 35 on the power play this season. Guy Krenz was hanging out nearby all game long. And, uh, Guy, what can you say? You know, we talked when it was a 5-3 game, but the Grizzlies got two unanswered there as Zach Sekos. And what a pass by Cameron Wright as he skated in you know, chased after the puck, got it, got to the right corner, threw a behind-the-back pass to Sekos, who was able to put it away. That's got to be one of the best plays in the week. And then Johnny Walker gets his second of the game a minute and a half later on a pass from right, and that, that secured the scoring. But what a great offensive performance by the Grizzlies all the way around. Yeah, Tyson, no doubt about it. And you know what? That goal uh, by uh, Johnny Walker to end the game, or excuse me, uh, Johnny Walker ended the game with the, uh, that goal there, but that goal by Sekos. Oh, my goodness. What a feed by Cameron right between the legs, and then Sekos just sashays on by. That's just fantastic. That's just, that's just beautiful. I mean, that could be on sport, uh, sports center top ten. That's just fantastic. So the Grizzlies played a great offensive game today, and it's really great to see. And you knew that Ben Tardif, you know, we talked about him going into Friday's game. He knew that Tardif was due. You know, last night he had a goal and an assist, and tonight he picked up a goal and two assists. I think everybody was waiting also for Brandon Cutler to emerge. Well, tonight Cutler had two goals and two assists. You know, the emergence that we've been waiting for from Cutler and Tardif, they showed up big for the Grizzlies tonight. Yeah, Tyson, no doubt about that. And you know what, Brandon Cutler, he came into this game, four games played, no goals, no assists, minus five, has a stellar performance. Two goals, two assists. Those two power play goals in the second period were the difference maker, I think, in the momentum shift for the Grizzlies to win this game. I think you were talking about what won the game for the Grizzlies. It was a 3-1 to one score, and then Josh Lamon got the boarding major, uh, and the Grizzlies had three minutes of a major power play. They skated 4-on-4. Four four. Neither team scored on the 4-on-4, four four, but then Cutler scored back-to-back -back goals, uh, turning a 3-1 game into a 5-1 game. And we know Kansas City's been a tough team in the third period. It was, good it was a good thing the Grizzlies had that 5-1 to one margin after two periods because Kansas City continued to battle. They've got a couple pretty tough lines, and I think Kansas City is going to be a good team this year. But when the score is 5-3, to three, you know, the Grizzlies buckled down, and I don't remember Kansas City uh, with the score 5-3, to three, and certainly after Utah was able to score their 6th and 7th goals, I don't remember Kansas City getting that many good opportunities. You know, Utah did a pretty good job defensively in limiting Kansas City's opportunities there to climb back into the game. Yeah, Tyson, you're right. The Grizzlies were really defensively sound uh, throughout this game. A little bit of a lapse in the third period, you know, uh, those two goals by Kansas City to start, and you know what, maybe you just got a little nervous there uh, because in the first two games, they let Kansas City back into the game uh, on Tuesday and last night, end up going into overtime and squeaking out a win there. But, you know, I think it shows a lot in the growth of the Grizzlies and how they're growing as a team as we go through in this season. Uh, you know, a couple bad third periods the last two times around. This time, not the case. They ended up getting those two goals and really putting them ahead and it speaks volumes to the character of this team. I have the three stars of the game as they posted on the ECHL app. Can you put? Oh, you probably have them too. I was going to have yeah, you guess what the three stars are. Uh, we'll give them to the audience. Third star of the game is Zach Sekos, who had two goals, was a plus one. Yeah, I think about Tardif taking that one nothing lead, but Sekos on the power play and an almost identical shot to Tardif, so one timer from the right circle. That made it 2 nothing, and then he scored the big insurance goal that put the game in the refrigerator, and making it 6-3 to three with us. He scored 16-19 in. Sekos is the third star. He didn't score a goal tonight, but Andrew Nelson had five assists. Believe it or not, he was an, actually, he was an even on the plus-minus category, but five assists by Nelson. Remember, most of those came on the power play, so the plus-minus isn't necessarily going to look that good because of, obviously, the power play goals, which don't factor into a plus-minus. Uh, Nelson with five assists. That's the most by a Grizzlies player. I got to look back to that one. I think it's been quite a few years since a Grizzly had five or more assists. I'd probably the Tim McGauley game when McGauley had six assists against Wichita 
back in December of 2019. I think that, uh, you know, Nilsson has the most assists by a Grizzly since Magali had the six assists. Maybe it was seven assists uh, against Wichita that night as he tied a, a team record that was previously set by Ryan Kanaswich for assists in a game. The number one star is Brandon Cutler, two goals and two assists. And what he did there in the first two periods was just outstanding as he scored all four points in the first two periods, and he's the number one star of the game. Uh, any disagreements with the three stars? No, and you, you got to think that was a hard one to pick three stars in this game when a lot of Grizzlies players played really well. I mean, five power play goals tonight. Six players had multi-point nights tonight. So, I mean, really tough one. I'm surprised Ben Tardif didn't find a way in there. If you had a fourth yeah. star, you could put Ben Tardif in there. Uh, Cameron Wright, three assists. He had a really good night. I mean, it, it's just – and that's what you want to see from the Grizzlies. Guys all over the board making a difference. It's really going to go a long way in their depth this season. Well, you'd almost think about the three stars. Could have had six or seven stars. You know, you mentioned uh, Tardif could have been the fourth star of the game. You could probably have Johnny Walker's two goals, have him as the fifth star. And Cameron Wright, what, would he be the sixth star of the game with three assists? And then what about Garrett Metcalf? Yeah, Metcalf. Metcalf, for the fourth straight time, defeats Kansas City. In fact, the last four appearances that Metcalf has had, including tonight, have all been against Kansas City. And they've all been Grizzlies victories as he scored two victories against Kansas City uh, the last two games he played, March 11th and 12th, and he had the season-ending injury. First two games of this season, victories against Kansas City. And as good as Lucas Preak has been for the Grizzlies in four games, you know, he was able to get some rest. And now Preak can you know, go on and play against Allen, and that's where the goaltending depth, that seems like we've been talking about all year long. You know, Trent Miner is in the AHL currently with the Colorado Eagles. But you got Parikh, you got Metcalf, and you got some goalies that, uh, you know, Ryan Kanasiewicz can feel really good about having on his roster. Yeah, Tyson, you're right. Garrett Metcalf is the man of the hour for sure, but you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, the Grizzlies' goaltending depth, I think, is the best in the entire league. I mean, you've, you've got Trent Miner, who's up in the AHL right now. You've got Parikh. You've got Metcalf. On any given night, you can put somebody in that and know that you're, gonna pro you're probably going to have a stellar performance because all these guys are elite. And uh, it just so happens that Garrett Metcalf got his number called tonight, and he was fantastic. Any final thoughts here tonight on this Saturday evening? Looks like the Houston Astros are up 4-1, to one, top of the eighth inning, and looks like they're a few outs away from winning the World Series. But over at Cable Dahmer Arena, it was you know, just outstanding to win two out of three games. Now you move on to Allen, and you, know, you think about it, you win two out of three games in that series, you come home with a 5-3 and three road trip. Utah's currently 3-2 and two on the trip. But it certainly was good after losing on Tuesday night, coming back Friday and Saturday, and seeing the offensive explosion. You know, the Grizzlies, what was it, the first five games of the season, they had scored 10 goals. Well, the last two games, they've scored 11 goals, and it's great to see the offense finally come on track like they have. Yeah, the Grizzlies uh, have finally arrived. Uh, the team that we've been expecting, we've seen over the last two games, and it'll be interesting to see how the Grizzlies play in Allen. Uh, they usually play them pretty well, but... We haven't seen the Americans this season, so they could be new and improved, much like the Kansas City Mavericks. So never overlook your next opponent, but things are looking pretty good for the Grizzlies. Utah was 5-0 and against Allen last season. They are led by first-year head coach Chad Costello, who's a future Hall of Famer as a player. He was actually a player for Allen and was one of their better players, but he's now the head coach of the Allen Americans. It should be interesting next Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. I guess we'll do it once again from this very studio at Maverick Center. Um, thanks for everything, Guy, this weekend. And, um, well, I should have dressed up like you did. You, you, you went with the all-black look. The problem is I sweat through my first shirt, and I'm just having this to cover cover myself up a little bit. I apologize uh, if oh, I you – know, but You had me beat yesterday. I mean, I came here in a polo, and he was all dressed up. And so, uh, you know, we got to be coordinated next time. But uh, yeah, it does get a little chilly in here, so good on you with the jacket. I might have to do that next time. Three hours of sleep. I was thinking of doing anything that just felt comfortable here tonight. Thanks for the time, Guy. Well, thank you, Tyson. And wishing all the best to you and your family. Uh, I'm sorry to hear about that news about your mom. Uh, know that uh, me, everybody in the Grizzlies staff, and Grizzlies country, we're all thinking of you and your family during this difficult time. Thanks, Guy. And, uh, you know, Grizzlies fight cancer night will be on February 24th, and hopefully my mom will still be around for that. As Utah broke through offensively, 7-3 to three the final score. You know, I mentioned the three stars, but it could have been so many other players uh, getting involved. And it's just an amazing performance by Andrew Nelson. I do have to go back to the Grizzlies record books. 
I think that performance by Tim McGauley when he had one goal and six assists might be the last time that a Grizzlies player had at least five assists in a game. And you know it's pretty good when you have to go to the record books to check to see if a Grizzly player broke a record because that means you did something well offensively. And Andrew Nelson with five assists tonight. Brandon Cutler broke through offensively. And what can you say? Uh, after losing on Tuesday, the best you could do is win two out of three, and they were able to do that, winning Friday four to three. And tonight, breaking through offensively, and the power play got going. Two for 29 the first six games of the season. They went five for six here tonight. Well, it was a lot of fun this evening, and hopefully it'll be fun next week because the Grizzlies will be in Allen, Texas, next Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, November 9th, 11th, and 12th. Some other scores from the Mountain Division. Tulsa defeats Wichita 4-1. Second intermission, Idaho leads Rapid City 1-0. Local college football, BYU defeats Boise State 31-28. Let's see if the Utes game has gone final uh, as of yet. Uh, looks like uh, 53 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Utah leads Arizona 45-20 as the Utes are going to go to 8-2 on the season. Arizona will fall to 3-7. and seven. Uh, Utah State got a victory over New Mexico, and Weber State lost to Sacramento State 33-30. to 30. Well, that'll wrap things up here from Maverick Center as the final score, the Utah Grizzlies 7 and the Kansas City Mavericks 3. Once again, in 2 hours and 35 minutes in front of 2,957 over at Cable Dahmer Arena, Andrew Nelson had five assists. Brandon Cutler had two goals and two assists. Zach Sekos and Johnny Walker each scored two goals. Ben Tardiff had one goal and two assists. And Cameron Wright had three assists. Taron Pfizer also picked up an assist as he's got a point in six of his first seven games. So what a performance by the Grizzlies offensively. They've scored 11 goals in their last two games. We'll see if they'll continue with their offensive ways against Allen as they take on the Americans for a three-game set, Utah went 5-0 and against the Americans last season. For Guy Carenza, I'm Tyson Whiting, and it is what it is. You've been listening to the Grizzlies post-game report presented by Siegfried and Jensen.